at 7-3 in his first year as the head coach. Houston Nutt and the Rebels of Ole Miss. They have won three in a row for the first time in five years. And deciding not to wait, the Tigers of LSU. 25 and 1 against unranked teams while playing at home. That one loss was a year ago, triple overtime to the Arkansas Razorbacks. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. This is a renewal of one of the older rivalries in the SEC, the 97th time they have met. And there's almost always something at stake. That's true again today. Both teams are bowl bound, Ole Miss, for the first time since 2003. So now it's a matter of which bowl, in which city, and in which time of the year. Houston Nutt told his team, the more we win, the warmer it's going to get. The two are tied at 3-3 three and three in the conference behind the undefeated and top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. They, of course, are destined for the SEC championship game against Florida in two weeks. Senior day here. And a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson with one of the stars of this LSU team. Herman, walking down Victory Hill for your final time. How emotional is this for you? I mean, it's emotional, but I mean, I got to let that I gotta let that go for the moment and uh, get my mind ready for this football game we're about to play. Is there any one memory that sticks out as you walk through the tunnel and onto the field for this final time? Well, I'm just walking out for the very first time. I mean, this, I mean, these seniors, I mean, we're like family. So, I mean, we're a close-knit group of guys. We're always hanging out, and we're always having fun. But, I mean, it's going to be very memorable for me. Well, thank you so much. Good luck. All right, thank you. Herman Johnson and his fellow 18 seniors have, uh, have created quite a record here, Gary. They, they're leaving quite a legacy. And I think seniors is the key. And, and, and going back to that game just a week ago against Troy, four years of hard work for Les Miles, that game, I think his seniors brought him through that football game. They were dead in the water. I mean, you saw it, 31 to 3, and guys like Tyson Jackson. Now, we know there's a lot of talent on this team, but at some point, those seniors, Johnson, Bird, I mean, these guys took this program when it was low and the fans had all left and said, uh-uh. We're letting this season go away. That's a tribute to them. Well, they are, of course, the defending national champions. And on the other side of the field this afternoon, an Ole Miss team under Houston Nutt that has really accomplished a lot. They've gotten into a bowl situation. I think it's a great story what Houston Nutt has done with this football team. And one of the keys, I believe, obviously, their quarterback, Jevin Sneed. This conference is not populated with a lot of great quarterbacks, but Jevin Sneed has come on, one of four guys, and it's the reason this team, they're physical, yes, but without Sneed's leadership and playmaking ability, no way Ole Miss is in the bowl game this year, and they need him today. All right, Gary, this game and all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS High Definition. LSU at home won the toss. They've deferred the option to the second half. So Ole Miss will get the ball to begin the game. 63 degrees, slight breeze, 5 to 10 miles per hour, and the forecast for clear and cool. All the old, uh, as we're looking at the game, uh, Houston Nutt brought his team out at the exact same time as LSU. Did you notice that? I did notice. They both got cheers. Huh. <laughs> the gamesmen, the gamesmen. So it'll be Ole Miss, Mike Wallace, the primary kick return specialist. And at the other end, number 30, Josh Jasper will kick off. This will be his 60th kickoff of the year. Only two have resulted in touchbacks, so likely that this will be returnable. Wallace at the three. Wallace at the 20. At the 24. Wallace. So Jevin Sneed will come on as the quarterback for the Ole Miss Rebels. 54% for the year, just under 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Up front, or the All SEC man, Neely, Gerald's Miller, and John Jerry. 
Hodge and Wallace are the wideouts. McCluster is a third wide receiver. Cordera Eason will open as the running back. He's the tailback in the eye. And McCluster is in motion to the right side. Here's Jevin Sneed, fires it out, overthrows Dexter McCluster. And that was going to be a difficult uh, catch to complete anyway. Defensively, as these lineups are brought to you by Wrangler, it's Jackson Alexander Favorite and Kirsten Pittman, the sixth-year senior. Riley Beckwith and Kelvin Shepard are the linebackers. And the secondary, Hawkins, Coleman, McCray, and the freshman, Patrick Peterson. Right now, Ole Miss fans are saying, we've been seeing those high passes from Jevin Sneed quite a bit all year. That's been his bugaboo all year. We saw the Auburn game. He must have thrown six or eight of them high. Second and ten. Sneed back. Fires it short. Complete out to the 30-yard line. Mike Wallace. And that'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up third and three. Chris Hawkins in the area. So was Kirsten Pittman, number 49. Ninth in the SEC. Had interception problems in the first half of the year. Well, yeah, he's, he's solved a little bit of that, I think. But his accuracy has not been there. And, you know, his own coach, Houston Nutt, kind of called him out. He said, I expected way more from Jevin Sneed. He's had a pretty good year. Third down. Play fake. Blitz from the corner. This one is complete to Wallace. Out in the flat, he shakes a tackle and is down the sidelines across the 50 and out of bounds at the 48, a 20-yard gain. Offensive coordinator Kent Austin, who's the old Ole Miss quarterback, has been working with Jevin in staying planted, keeping his weight excuse me, between his feet and being more accurate. And when he gets it to these playmakers and these wide receivers, Wallace, Bro, McCluster, they can make guys meet. There's Kent Austin. Played collegially at Ole Miss, 15 years in the Canadian Football League. Most recently as the head coach in Saskatchewan. On first down, it's McCluster out of the backfield. Goes right, Shepard tackles him as he gets inside the 45 to the 43. Well, the, the, the word was when we talked to Houston Nutt, we can't win if we can't run. But interestingly, they started the game off with three straight passes. So you can see now as Houston signals in the plays, he has the respect for this LSU defense. Nutt in his first year after 10 years as the head coach at Arkansas and has the bowl eligible for the first time since Eli Manning and the 2003 Ole Miss Rebels. Second and four. Play fake, Sneed back, fires left side, man wide open. It's caught by McCluster, he's got another Ole Miss first down at the 27. Chad Jones, number three, makes the tackle. Well, I guess Ole Miss saw the Troy tape because early in that game, Troy started out with those long drives with easy throws. To me, this looks like long drives with easy throws. Wow. <laughs> Even I could tell. Yeah, that was, <laughs> looked the same, didn't it? It did. Well, here's the wild rub. Okay, Brandon Bolden is in. McCluster gets the handoff, and oh, baby, up high. The tackle is made, and he's down at the 25-yard line. This is the wild rebel, of course. I think most college fans recognize the wildcat offense. Houston Nutt. Uh, at Arkansas with McFadden and Felix Jones. And he had no more success against any team in his then, you know, Wildcat, now Wild Reb, than against LSU. So you knew, and LSU knew. They told us, we know we're going to get it, and if we don't stop it, we're going to get more of it. McCluster this time is split bottom of the screen. That's Wallace. He's got a bunch of receivers now, and there's a flag. We may have a motion call. Here's Sneed. Nice move. And he's not known that much as a runner, but he's got a touchdown Boy. if the play stands. It will not. It will not. You were right, Vern. What a terrible self-inflicted wound by Ole Miss. One of those three receivers on the left side appeared to go in motion. Yep. Number two, offense was moving forward and stopped. Total self-inflicted wound. Mike Wallace will head towards the line of scrimmage before the snap. Watch. There, there. He's headed forward. Now he turns up a little too quickly. 
It was small, and it didn't have anything to do with the play, but the flag clearly came out before anything happened. Sneed gets it across the goal line, but it wasn't going to count. That wipes out a touchdown run by Jevin Sneed of 26 yards, and instead it's second and 14. That's a big difference, isn't it? Oh, my God. Seven points or second and 14 from the 31. Brandon Bolden is the running back. He's one of three freshman running backs that uh, Ole Miss will use. Here's Sneed. And another flag. Timeout is called. No flag. Time called, I think, on the sideline. Probably. Ole Miss uses one of his three. And we will uh, step aside. During the offseason, the student governments at both schools, Ole Miss and LSU, decided to put a name on this one. And so it is called the Magnolia Bowl. This is the first edition of same. And the uh, Magnolia is the state flower of both. Magnolia Bowl, one of a selection of five. There was a vote, and uh, here's the trophy. So you're, you're part of history here. Didn't first know one. that, I bet. No? First one. The first Magnolia Bowl. These two teams first played in 1894. Second down and 14. Here's the reverse left side. Wow. Kelvin Shepard blew it up. And then Raheem Alem came in to complete the play. Kind of ironic. Kelvin Shepard, number 11, and Perry Riley, number 56. The two outside linebackers on this inside wide receiver reverse didn't get to play much last week against Troy. So they're ready for this football game with a normal offense. Third and 17, and recall that three plays ago, a motion call wiped out a 26-yard touchdown run by Jevin Sneed. Wallace wide to the right. Cordera Eason is the only running back. Sneed back, steps up, goes deep. Got him in the middle. Touchdown, Mike Wallace. It was Wallace who was guilty of the motion penalty. He helps make amends with a 34-yard touchdown catch, his third touchdown reception of the year. Well, it was thought that LSU's secondary might be susceptible. Well, and, and a total blown coverage. They were playing three on two, and they totally blew it. Josh Machine on to... Uh, Attempt the extra point. It's good, but there's a flag down. These three guys, one, these three guys, one, two, and three have the two receivers. Now watch what happens. Out of position. Here it goes. Wallace goes right down the middle. Two guys chase the wrong guy, and a trailer who thought he had deep help to the outside gets nothing. Totally blown the coverage on the play, and Wallace, I mean, you're thinking no chance to pick up a first down. You get a touchdown on this play. It was offsides against LSU. It was declined, and it's 7-0 Ole Miss. Eight plays, four minutes, 76 yards. The touchdown coming from Jevin Sneed to a wide-open Mike Wallace. And uh, Wallace, three catches, and helped... Uh, negate the impact of that motion penalty. In the dictionary, when you put wide open there, they're going to yeah. show that play right there. I mean, holy cow, third and... That's a, that's, that's a shock. You know, it's never a good thing when the, you can only see one guy in the I know, three. exactly. That's not a good sign. Sparks is going to kick off. Well, you know, these are the two of the lowest rated pass defense teams in the SEC, 12th and 10th. Keelan Williams... Trinden Holiday are deep. And this will be Holiday. Wow. Knocked rudely out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Patrick Trahan. Yeah, I think uh, Keelan Williams got that one. They were kicking away from Holiday. Jared Lee, abysmal start last week. He was intercepted. It was returned for a touchdown for the seventh time this year but in the fourth quarter Gary he really got on. he sure did I mean 12 for 15 I mean there weren't a lot of people that were there but there will be a lot of people that said they were there for the big comeback largest comeback in LSU's 105 years of college football 
and lead for the season. You see the interception. What a problem it has been. Here's the red shirt sophomore, and that one is poorly thrown. Intended for Brandon LaFell, but nowhere in the area. And let's check the LSU offensive line. It's Black, Herman Johnson, Helms, another senior hit, and Barksdale up front. LaFell and Bird are the wideouts. Charles Scott, a thousand yard season at running back. Quinn Johnson, the fullback, and Richard Dixon, the tight end. Out of the spread. Now look to the sidelines. And Lee comes up to make sure everybody. This is taking a while, isn't it? And they hand it off to Scott. All of that for about a yard. Defensively for Ole Miss, the defensive line is pretty decent. More than that. Tillman, Laurent, Parade Jerry, the best of the bunch. Lockett is the defensive end. The linebackers, keep your eyes on Alan Palmer, number 11, having a good year. And in the secondary, Jamarcus Stanford has really had a, a standout season. He wears number 13. Ashley Palmer. Third and nine. Blitz. They go left, get nothing. It'll be fourth down. Three and out for LSU. Uh, I'm up here clapping for that call. Third and nine, LSU. Are you clapping with a degree of sarcasm? Of course. That's what I do best. <laughs> and would you explain why? Well, against Alabama, I thought it was putting too much, as I said before, on Jarrett Lee too early in the game. Nothing wrong with punting the football early in the game and let Jarrett, who seems to get better as the game goes along, kind of get his sea legs. In that Alabama game, LSU faced a third and 18 and uh, tried to get it all in that one play, and it was intercepted, returned, touchdown. Here's the punt. Marge oh, Green. Oh, man. My gosh. Ron Brooks. We've called his name on special teams a couple of times this Boy, week. Feel the punt. Well, now, the, when, a, when you punt the ball like that and you have coverage like that, now it's time for the strategy, as I said, run the draw for the defense to take over. You get that kind of coverage, this senior defense has to start making some plays. Compete against your friends in College Bowl Pick'em to become the ultimate champion and for your chance at the $10,000 grand prize. It's free to play. Sign up now at cbsportscom slash fantasy. 7-0 Ole Miss. And uh, the Rebels have the ball first down at their own 21-yard line. They've lost their last six in this series to LSU. Last win, 2001. Here's Snead back, steps up, pressured, shakes the tackle, and does almost get back to the line of scrimmage. Raheem Alem, who has six sacks on the year with the tackle. Now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. To diagnose maybe what happened, let's look at the other side to see how the defense was supposed to be played, and you'll see the mistake was made by the corner here. Watch to the bottom of the screen, not the touchdown. They double the slot. The corner, Peterson, has the receiver. The same should be happening at the top of the screen. The corner that time, Phelan Jones, blew the coverage. And so Wallace gets the 34-yard touchdown catch. Now second down and 11. This is Cordera Eason who gets back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 10, and let's spend a moment with Tim Brando. All right, Vern, on a snowy, wintry day in Happy Valley, Darrell Clark is going to go to work, find his man Graham Zug. A Penn State win gives them the Big Ten title. They have the lead over Sparty. And Tennessee avoids its first ever eight loss season as they knock off Vanderbilt 20 to 10. Back to you. Of course, Vandy achieved a bowl status, bowl eligible status last week with their win over Kentucky. Third down and 10 here. Shotgun, Sneed back. Pressure from the corner. Oh, he overthrows another receiver. Well, wow. He had to that time. Okay. He was right on that one. He caught a corner blitz. He had nothing. He had to throw it away this time. 
You'll see Danny McRae come over late. Corner's going to come in the side of your picture right here, and McRae comes over. The receiver didn't really run the right route, and Sneed was forced to just get rid of that ball and avoid a sack. Nice job by Sneed. That brings on Rob Park, who's having a very good season, just under 40 yards per punt. Trendon Holiday he is back to Houston Nutt telling us on a phone call on Tuesday. Trendon Holiday scares him more than any player in the LSU roster. And maybe for good reason. Too. Yeah. Fair catch this time. And Holiday grabs it. 39 yard punt. More importantly, nothing on the return. 19 seniors playing their final game for the Tigers of LSU. Among them, Jeff. Seven nothing Ole Miss here. Second possession now for LSU at the 40 yard line. Well, the, the, the fake snap kind of the defense showed they're yes, going to come did. right yeah. here. And come Ash. Ashley Palmer's going to come off the, the edge. That's Brett Helms over the ball. Snap back the option to the left to pitch. And around the corner. Is Keelan Williams number five tackled by Jonathan Cornell. Well, you could see right there Gary Croton was making that play. They simulated the snap and they went up in the box. Now there's a couple things here that's going through Gary's mind. One thing, there's an old saying calling plays, there's eyesight, what you can see, and there's insight to what you got. And right now he's learning more and more how he has to manage Jarrett Lee. He's used an insight rather than his eyesight like he'd like to call. Second down and two. Quinn Johnson goes back in the fullback position now. Here's motion from Demetrius Bird. They'll follow Johnson's block, Keelan Williams, and he stopped for a loss of one. Marcus Tillman, number 92. Ashley Palmer, number 11. Third down. Well, I tell you, Herman Johnson, we've seen him here kind of, I don't want to say grow up because he was big when he was, I mean, <laughs> kind of doesn't work. But Big Herm is uh, one of those guys that's kind of not fair, him blocking a linebacker. He, such a bright guy. You saw him talking to Tracy. I mean, he was a joy to visit with yesterday. You know, all the years we've done LSU, that's the first time I think we've had a chance to right. sit down and spend time and with we, him. We made a mistake. We should have yeah. visited with him more. Really a bright fellow. He's going to graduate. He and Quinn Johnson, part of the graduating class on December 19th. Here's the handoff to Quinn wow. Johnson. Wow. And they get stuffed on third down. Kentrell Lockett just read that play and blew it up. And so. Let's talk about this LSU front. Vern talked to you earlier that they're a talented team, and they are. Lockett is right here, I believe, and he just crashes. Actually, nobody blocks him. That's a busted assignment inside. I think it was Dixon that should have blocked him, Richard Dixon, number 18, and play was blew up. But those front four are stuffing. Remember, they held Alabama to 107 yards rushing, that front four from Old Mills. Fourth down. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Brady Dalfrey. Marche Green with a fair catch signal. He takes it inside the 10. At the 10 yard line. First down. And for more on Herman Johnson, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, the 6'7", 386-pound lineman is the largest player ever to don an LSU uniform and the biggest baby ever born in Louisiana, weighing in at 15 pounds, 14 ounces. He told us this week he was picked on as a kid and he couldn't play organized sports till sixth grade. His nickname, you say it, The House. And what is The House like to eat? Lasagna and peach cobbler. Favorite movie, Madagascar. And, guys, he's actually a big softy. Johnson loves to clean. And his first job in high school, a baby. Sitter. Ah, thanks, Trace. Here's the handoff to Cordera Eason, number 75. And let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim. All right, Vern, it's rivalry Saturday. The 101st time the Apple Cup at stake. And no, Vern, you weren't around for the first one. Washington strikes first. Willie Griffin scores from three yards out. 7-0 for Ty Willingham's team. Back to you, Vern. The Rebel. All right, Tim. But I think that is the, the first year that Brando started complaining about the BCS, though, with that first half. <laughs> I, I think it was. <laughs> I think you're right. Play fake, Sneed, screen pass, right side. It's Eason. And it's a first down, Ole Miss out to the 24. Sneed's pass is well, as, as we mentioned a moment ago, it, we made a mistake never having had a chance to chat with 
Herman Johnson. He uh, was raised in Denton, said he wanted to come back to LSU because family was in Louisiana and uh, was very uh, expressive in talking yeah. about the difficulties of being a large child. Said he didn't have friends from the time he was in kindergarten to third grade. They all assumed he was so big that he'd been held back as a student. Not true. And here's the handoff, and this time a fine defensive play. Harry Coleman is there, number 24, and Derry Beckwith, number 48. Yeah, Derry Beckwith, another one of those seniors, have been through so much right here. I mean, uh, he read that play and slithered in. It looks like the linebackers for LSU are starting to get a feel now for what this old Miss offense is going to be. So now, what do you do? Here are the, the Rebels. Ken Austin's calling those plays. They were successful throwing the ball early. Will they come back to it? Now McCluster's on the field. Three split wide, top of the screen. A little odd here, outside the formation lined up. Will it be a sprint out or something? Quick set up. Sneed, it's not going to be anything. Marlon Favorite is another of those seniors. The senior out of Harvey, Louisiana with the sack. Yeah, McCluster was flanked out wide, and he's going to get out with a quick flat, but... Uh, Nothing doing. The inside pressure was too much. And uh, the LSU defense, and maybe I think the strategy that played right, is on third down, protect Jarrett Lee a little bit, punt the ball, and ask your defense to get to the lead, or at least a tie. Loss of seven, third and 17. Eason and Jason Cook in the backfield. Let's see if they do it better this time. On the draw. This will be Eason, and he runs right into Marlon Favorite again. So, Ole Miss held in check, and they will punt the ball away. Both teams, when they're backed up on third and long, or third down for LSU, don't want to do it. But when they had, remember when they were in there, it's not too hard to throw the ball when you're on the 31. It's hard to throw the ball third and long when you're on the 20. Rob Park on to punt for the second time. Holiday is deep. Good downfield coverage forces a fair catch exactly where he had it last series at the 40-yard line, and that one was close. Monday on TV's number one comedy, Love Hurts, on a new Two and a Half Men, Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. All right, now I got a feeling here with this field position, Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator, will now start to unravel Jarrett Lee and say, okay, now remember we were here before, he started throwing the wall to the outside, outside the numbers. So we might get to see some comebacks or sprint outs because he's going to feel comfortable with the ball on the 40. First down and 10. Lee back. Lee goes deep. He's got LaFell and Bird down there. And Bird can't yeah. quite make the catch. Yeah, outside the numbers. Try to unravel the quarterback. This is a good time to do it. Marche Green defending. Now, I said that LSU struggled a little bit with their secondary. They're 10th in the SEC. Well, Ole Miss is last in the SEC, and this one could have been. Actually, it was a pretty nice finish that time because Marche Green got his hand in there at the last second, or Bird would have got it. Well, Bird is 6'3", LaFell is 6'3", Terrence Tolliver is 6'5". There's a decided height advantage for these LSU wide receivers. Yeah, and, and now we've got Trinan Holiday on the field right now as uh, the officials are going to meet here with the, obviously, clock issues again. Well, like, the game clock has uh, got a mind of its own. It's yep. now 159 and still running. We have a clock yeah. issue, ladies and gentlemen. This is called a clock issue. Yeah, we're all, well, none of us can stop the clock when we want to, can, can we? <laughs> It's, it's a little more difficult at my age than it is at yours. <laughs> no, we're all aging at the same pace. <laughs> Please reset the game clock to 2 minutes, 44 seconds. There, that didn't take long. Now we'll see if it gets itchy again. 2.44. And it'll be second down and 10. Jarrett Lee... Uh, chatting with Gary Croton and Les Miles yesterday, talking about this seven interceptions returned for touchdowns and how it affects the plays that they call. Oh, yeah, Gary. he said it affected them. There's no doubt. He said, I, I wasn't sure on how exactly to call plays. And he said it wasn't until the second half of the Troy game that I did it. There's Holiday right there lined up in this formation. Here's Lee back. Has time. Goes deep for Holiday. And I think he ran out of bounds and then yeah. came back in. I think he got jammed out that time. Did he? Okay. Cassius Vaughn did a nice job. Holiday got to fight to stay in bounds. But you can see 
Seven nothing, good field position. LSU says, let's see if we can get our quarterback back in the game. Now, for the first time in this football game, is Greg Hardy finally on the field? And let's see if 86 is out there. He is at defensive end, and, and, and Trace is going to tell us if he's playing with the right shoes here today. <laughs> and the clock shows 244 to go. That means that the clock didn't work again. Yes. And now, let's see, the line judge comes over and says, whoa. So it never started right. once declared ready for play a moment ago. So we've got a huddle here. First, they couldn't stop it. Now they can't start it. Well, LSU fans are, are used to a lot of throwing after last week. You know, in last week's Check game against again. Troy, as we watch this pass, trust us, it st starts at 244 and ends at 244. 113 passes were thrown by the two teams last week. 72 by Troy. Troy had a 31 to 3 lead and then uh, LSU came back and won it 40 31. You can still see though how LSU is trying to protect Jarrett Lee throwing the ball to the outside not wanting anything bad to happen trying to say okay seven nothing I know we don't want to be behind but let's not make I mean a poor guy every time he makes a mistake you know it's like you know it's bad enough dropping a dish but he drops the, the family heirloom when he makes break every time he does something he doesn't just nick the car he kind of nicks the 57 t-bird it's like the worst thing that can happen every time he throws an interception the game clock controllers malfunctioning on the sideline the game clock will now be controlled from the press box it's third down so 239 to go and, here, and here's that tough time, that third down time in the football game that we'll see what LSU wants to do. We yep. talked to Jarrett yesterday. We asked him, you know, you, you, there's an old saying, right? If you survive it, you'll get better. I asked him, you're going to survive it? And he says, yes, I am. Yep. Credited Les Miles. He said he's never really gotten in his face. And that makes him want to play. There's Hardy right there at the defensive end. Board. Yep, Greg Hardy, number 86, bothered by a stress fracture in his foot. And here's Lee, right side. He's got him open. Right side. Caught by Tolliver. And it's a first down. Lee's pass. LSU. See, this is good game. This is how you manage a quarterback that's having problems. Let's first go to Greg Hardy. Match up on Black, then Herman Johnson. Good job by Hardy. But then coming to the outside, it's press bail technique, easy out. Anytime you have a corner looking in at you and you have an out to the outside, they don't have a chance to stop it. And it's a first down and 10 following a 14-yard game. Not that it had an effect on that play, but you're talking about a 6-5 receiver on a 5-9 defensive back. Remember, all three of those throws were to the outside of the field to protect the quarterback. First down and 10. Here's Lee back again. He's going deep for Tolliver. Oh, oh my man. goodness. Oh, wow. Man. I mean, he was all by himself. Had a leading edge at the 23-yard line. And no patience that time. Now, remember, this guy's still a freshman, but there's this area is going to be wide open for Tolliver to get into, and that time Jarrett Lee just did not have the patience. He felt the pass rush, and maybe for good reason. You know what? He did get a flash from the backside. Lockett got in his face, so I'm going to give him a pass on that one. He knew he had to get rid of the ball. Cassius Vaughn was the trailing defensive back. It's second down and 10. Again, the senior Brett Helms over the ball at center. Four-man rush by Ole Miss. Here's Lee crossing pattern underneath. And that one is caught by Richard Dixon, number 18. Well, we talked about these pick sixes, Gary. Take us through them. It's painful yeah. for Lee. I, I mean, it's got it's gotten me so bad. Like I said, you know, we all throw interceptions, but when you get them picked off and they go the other way, it starts to really play on your head and affect your team. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is almost impossible to do. It's gotten, it was funny, Les was kind of being funny about it. He says almost part of our protection scheme now when we release the football, we say cover just as he throws the ball. Third down, less than two. Right side, Scott. No, I don't think so. Wow, great stop. Don't think so. It'll be fourth down. Tony Fine, number 47. 
37. Made right. the tackle. I'll tell you, Quinn Johnson, number 45, blows up people. But watch, he doesn't blow up whomever it is. I didn't see who it was. Look at that take on. That's a big time take on by Lamar Brumfeld that time. He just stoned Quinn Johnson. Fourth down. Well, fourth down less. I mean, this is even. Yep. You know, there's... They have not been as effective this year as you saw. Five for 14 after that stellar season in 07. On fourth down, it's Johnson, the fullback. The senior gets the first down. Ben Johnson, Les Miles, telling us yesterday, I think he's one of the best fullbacks in college football. And, and how ironic it is, Quinn Johnson, number 45, one of the seniors, as it's half the ball has to go across the line. Brett Helms does a great job at center. Les Miles recruited Quinn Johnson to go to Oklahoma State as a fullback. Quinn Johnson said, I don't want to do that. All of a sudden, Les Miles comes to LSU. He goes, hello, fullback. <laughs> I think Les was right. Yeah, I think so, too. On first down and 10, here's Lee. Play fake. Looks deep. He's got Tolliver, and he overthrows him. Flag. Yeah, that's interference. Absolutely. Good penalty, too. If Cassius Vaughn doesn't grab him, you can see, the, the Vern, you can hear the fans are a hair trigger here with the quarterback. Now, I've been there. I know when you struggle the game prior. Pass interference, number 24, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. The fans don't forget. So the first couple bad passes the next game, they're going to grab you and yell at you and start the boo. And you can see right there, Vaughn grabs Tolliver. That would have been a perfect throw. The crowd just reacted to the throw being overthrown and started booing right away. Throw the flag, yep. You're right. And it was thrown. So from the 19, now Jordan Jefferson is in at quarterback. The freshman, we were told by Les Miles and Gary Croton, you will see him sprinkled in plays throughout the game. And he's primarily a runner. Caught and dropped as he gets to the 15-yard line. He's a true freshman. Les Miles said, no way is he ready to carry this football team. Not through the entire 60 minutes. We've reached the end of the first quarter with the score 7-0 Ole Miss. We'll return to Tiger Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Between periods, on your left, Matthew Sign, Chief no, Operating no, Officer of the National Football Foundation. That's Joe attention. Oliva on the right. And in the middle, greatest player in the history of LSU, Billy Cannon, who has been chosen for induction into the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame back in New York in two weeks, and whose number permanently retired, and it will be remembered here in Tiger Stadium in the upper right-hand corner. That happened just a moment ago. 7-0 Ole Miss leading LSU, LSU with a second down and seven. Clock issues. Boy. That's a double oofta. Here uh, we go again. Can't get it. No. Nope. Well, I thought it was already up in the press box. Or they, they tried to take it back down to the field again. This apparently is a play clock problem. Oh. Okay. Did you hear the crowd a while ago? They began to boo. It's the first time I've ever heard the clock operator booed. And uh, we'll explain it to Les Miles. And uh, subsequently, Houston Nutt. Now we've got some experience with this. If, yes. if it is, <laughs> yes. if it's not working, the back judge will put his hand up when it's 10 seconds left on the play clock. Now we're going to tell Houston Nutt the same thing. This is uh, Mark Curls, the referee, head of the officiating crew. Bottom right here, you can yep. see. That Hold I'm, it. Yeah, I'm calling timeout. I got one timeout per game for the play clock operator. <laughs> This does tend to bring the rhythm of the game to a complete halt. Well, that first quarter went by so quickly. I, I, 
I, I know the Six listeners nine, seven, out there are going, oh, that must be CBS. They probably want to stick in a few more commercials. <laughs> I do that when I'm watching. Do you really? Like, the yes. controller on the sideline is also now malfunctioning. All right. It will be kept on the field by the back judge. It is the dreaded double yeah. malfunction. Well, we, it's spreading. <laughs> And so it's second down and seven. Sneed out of the <laughs> out of the spread. Oh goodness! Let's get organized. Seven nothing. This is LSU's first. I, I got nothing for this. I, 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 I was waiting for you. <laughs> Here's the option and the pitch, and oh, yeah. LSU had nothing for it. Yeah. Wow. Patrick oh, Trahan. Yeah. Well, and uh, Dustin Muzon. Yeah, Dustin Muzon beat the receiver to the outside. The option wasn't much. They don't think Jarrett Lee's going to run inside. The tackle was beat. That was just everything went wrong. You can see this LSU team is not really uh, option ready here. It's not like Ryan Perlou was here and they're running it, you know, eight, ten times a game. Ryan Perlou destined to be the starter here. His troubled career at LSU ended when he was kicked off the team and is now at Jacksonville State in Alabama. Dixon split out. Here's Sneed back. Pumps. Caught and dropped. I'll tell you, Parade Jerry that time there, I, I think, may be a first-round draft pick. Their big nose tackle just flushed right through. Nobody could block him in that play. I think he's to the outside. He just comes in right now. And watch, he gets right by Jarrett Lee and then cleaned up on the play. Scott, what a great job by Jerry. So that's going to bring on another of the seniors, Cole David, the all-time leading scorer in LSU history. He's 10 of 13 for the year. This is a 46-yard field goal. Not much wind. Kick on its way, and it is perfect. Inside the right upright, LSU is on the board. Cole David out of Grapevine, Texas, just a little north of the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. We've added a new wood fire grill to every Red Lobster, a grill master in every kitchen, and created a new wood grill menu with 14 entrees done over the wood fire to bring out the natural flavors of our new lobster, shrimp, and scallops mixed grill. And give a subtle hint of the wood fire to our new sirloin and shrimp. Wood fire grilling, a whole new way to love seafood. Now at Red Lobster. Hey, what kind of light beer do you want? Uh, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Whoa! All the same? Are they all as easy to drink as Bud Light? Isn't water from this hose easier to drink than water from this one? Isn't this bottle easier to drink from than this one? And wouldn't you agree that a raindrop is easier to drink than hail? Point is, there's a difference, and Bud Light has it. It's called drinkability. The just right taste that makes Bud Light so easy to drink. Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. A lot goes through your mind after an accident. But with Liberty Mutual, insurance issues won't. Because we offer unlimited rental coverage, new car replacement, and accident forgiveness to help ease your mind. And that's our policy. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Jake's in love. That boy touches my daughter. I'm going to be touching you. Understood. And love can hurt. Are you out of your mind? A new Two and a Half Men CBS Monday. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. What would Thanksgiving be without a good wingman? Find out on a new Big Bang Theory Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. 46-yard field goal, Colt David. And it'll be Jasper to kick off for LSU and Mike Wallace, the deep man, 7-3, 11 plays, 31 yards. And the field goal from Colt David. Jasper is the kickoff man for the Tigers. 7-3. Wallace at the five. Out near the 30, just short. There'll be uh, 
First down and 10, Ole Miss. And this is an Ole Miss team, Gary, that uh, their opening drive looked great, and they haven't done much offensively since. No, they scored two touchdowns on that opening drive, but this is a legitimate football team. You know, they've lost four games by a total of 19 points combined. I mean, they got, you see that defensive line. Sneed can make the plays, but it's a great matchup. And LSU's got the same type of thing and the same problems in the secondary. And as we pointed out, there is much to play for here as uh, these two teams fight for a bowl selection. And uh, Houston Nutt, just to reiterate what he said, the more we win, the warmer it's going to get. First down and 10. Sneed goes left. Has a man, and it's complete out to the 38-yard line. Catch is made by Shea Hodge, number three. Well, that, that puts Sneed now, you know, five out of seven passes with one of them a throwaway. He's thrown a touchdown pass, and he's actually, I'm excuse, now six out of eight. It was five out of seven going into that play. So he's managed the game. He's thrown one away, and... Uh, gotten off actually both quarterbacks have started the game I think according to plan for both coaches second down one Derek Davis is now the running back he gets the handoff it's a cutback play it's a first down Ole Miss this is an Ole Miss team that will use five running backs throughout the game Curtis Taylor number 27 Davis makes yeah. the tackle and, and and of all five I think Houston not right now is saying and none of them are Darren McFadden <laughs> I got five but I don't have the guy I had at Arkansas yeah the five don't equal one no nope. not at all first down and ten Brandon Bolden the true freshman is in McCluster as well they fire it out to Bolden out of the flat and he's being chased he's got a first down at the 45, perhaps the 44-yard line, Chris Hawkins was the trailing tackler, number 29. Well, Ken Austin is the coordinator, but this football team is running nice. Now watch, fake, and then he fakes, actually, and he throws the ball to the same man he faked to on the play. Austin is kind of moving the chains with his offense. He told us, and it kind of makes sense, I mean, obviously, the worst thing we can have is third and longs. I want a bunch of third and shorts. It's a first down 10 here. And this is Derek Davis who's back. He picks up one. Second down nine, seven, three here. Let's check in with Tim back in New York. I need to update uh, Joe Paterno's team now. One win away from capturing the Big Ten. They go up 14 to nothing. Michigan State as Don Lawler. Dan Lawler takes it in from four yards out. Now, B.C. will win the ACC's Atlantic Division with victories over Wake and Maryland. And right now, they're up 13 to nothing in the second. They play the Terps in one week. Vern. Second down 10. Okay, Tim, second down nine here. 7 3 Ole Miss. Sneed back. Good blocking up front. Flag is thrown, or at least the ball whistled dead. There's a flag on the near side. Before the snap, false start. Number 77, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. To me, like he's going to flip the play and run the same thing the other way. Rebels. You see it kind of flip it, flip, yep, just yep, turn his hand, so flip. flip it, and run the other way. And uh, the five-yard penalty, Second third down. against Ole Miss in this ball game. Oh, I got to call timeout. Must have had the wrong personnel group in there. And that's their second. So one remaining for Ole Miss CBS Sports coverage at the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. Abraham Tittle, and what a kick it was for us yesterday. He walked into our meeting room and yep. talking. He's first time he's seen the new facilities here at, at LSU. Played here from 44 to 47. Lives in the Bay Area. And a very warm and richly deserved reception for him when he was introduced during the timeout. Sneed got it. That's complete to the 40 yard line. Shea Hodge in front of Patrick Peterson. Boy, has uh, Jevin Sneed ever improved? Uh, he, he's going to have a breakout year next year, I believe, for this Ole Miss team. He's just grown. They got half of it back. Good call. See, he's on balance, throwing the ball, hitting the receiver right in the face with it, not forcing it, not throwing it too hard. One of the things I learned you know, talking to Steve Smurr, I know slants. Throw him an egg. Don't throw him a rock. Nice and easy. You don't have to gun it to him. Third down five. Draw play. McCluster 
Oh, good defense. Sure was. Fourth down. Patrick Peterson, number seven, getting the start today. And Tremaine Johnson, number 47, another of those seniors. So it's a, a freshman and a senior who collaborate on that tackle. And they usually put back Jones, Chad Jones, in this situation as a returner because he can block people and maybe save a ball and he's a good fair catcher. It's a fake. They got a man wide open at the five yard line. Kendrick Lewis, who's a defensive back, a 33 yard pass. Well, that was pretty nice, wasn't it? Snap it to the upside, up back. Slot man is right. That's who's going to get the ball right there. Snap it right there. He kind of sprints out, and there it goes. Now, Ole Miss was playing safe, but Chris Hawkins did not stay with his man. He thought it was a run. He left his man on the play. LSU called punt safe, and it still worked. Here's Sneed. Comes right, pulls it up. Knocked out of bounds inside the five. So it's Jason Cook who throws the pass to Kendrick Lewis, the fullback, to the defensive back, a 33-yard gain. Normally you talk about LSU's gambling on fourth down, and here's Houston Nutt who uh, pulls the fake punt and completes the pass. McCluster and Bolden are in the backfield now. Sneed. So Ken Austin calls him down to Houston Nutt, and Houston signals him in. It's Bolden. Stretches for the goal line. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Out of the wild Rebel formation. Three-yard run. The LSU defense has seen about as much as they'll ever want to see of this Wildcat slash 2008 Wild Rebel. They have given this defense fits. And on second down, take it into the end zone that time. Perry Riley holding on for dear life, but couldn't stop him. Joshua Sheen on for the extra point. The holder is the punter, Rob Park. The key was the pass on fourth down from the fullback, Jason Cook. To the defensive back, Kendrick Lewis, that was a 33-yarder. Remember that there's the fake punt right there, the pass. Remember Kevin Steele, who coached with Houston Nutt, told us, the Alabama defensive coordinator, Houston Nutt will do anything at any time from anywhere. But Gary and I will, and Tracy will be along with us. How about Georgia Tech dismantling Miami Whew. like that? Paul Johnson's got to be in the running you know, almost for coach of the year, what he's doing. And contrast that, what's happened at Michigan. Two spread teams, one worked first year, one didn't. Uh, to say that it didn't work up yeah. in Ann Arbor is, uh, whew. We got hammered again bounds. today. That's going to be out of bounds. It sure is. And that helps out Jared Lee. And as much as you might want to hide Jared Lee early in the game, Remember LSU last week, Croton said, halftime 31-3. We got to call it, Jared, it's up to you. This week down 14-3. Remember the Auburn game down 14-3? Kind of been a trend. Now this will be uh, just a footnote now, the third consecutive drive that begins at the 40-yard line. Remember they had the fair catch from Holiday on two back-to-back -back punts, and they did manage to get three points out of it, but... Uh, they're going to go with Jefferson to start this drive. Yeah. Jordan Jefferson, freshman out of St. Rose, Louisiana. He's only one for seven throwing. I ball. watched him throw. He's got a big time arm. Big time arm. See if they throw on first down. They will not. Bad misfire. Yep. Now it's going to be first and 15. The full snap, full start, number 78, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. On a goal line play, Jordan Jefferson came off the bench, replaced Lee last week, and uh, on this rollout, strolled in for the first touchdown in the comeback, and uh, everybody seemed to notice that the first man out to congratulate him was Jarrett Lee after the score. What that didn't show is that was a fourth down play that he came in for that play. Now Lee is back, and uh, the backs are in the aisle. LaFell starts in motion. Lee lofts it out. It's oh, in. Oh, man. Oh, 
my, that was going to be number eight. They, they would have had to have a state trooper to get Jared Lee out of here if that one was caught. That was going to be number eight. Absolutely. Cassius Vaughn had it all over. The ball came out real slow. Vaughn right here. Just watch him. The ball came out and hung. And watch this. Oh, I just thought for sure that that one was gone. And there's not a guy on the feet. I, talk about not bad tackling. No one had a chance to make that tackle. No, sir. Instead, incomplete second down. I, I was 15. nervous on that one. <laughs> Deep right side, double coverage, and it is. Can almost predict where that ball was going to go, yeah. wasn't it? Going to go outside the play numbers. Yeah. Patrick Trahan was defending on that one. You know, Jared Lee has manned up after every one of these tough games, and he's met with the press, handled it. He met with us yesterday and addressed the problem, but gosh. If... if um you want to hide, uh, I wouldn't suggest playing quarterback. How about that footnote? 34 straight without an interception. That's not exactly. 14-3. It's hard to hide your quarterback now. Yeah. You got to go for it. Four-man rush. Lee underneath. It's caught. But it'll be uh, fourth down. And let's go back once again to Tim Brando in New York. Vern, I know how much you love it when a team hangs 70. Florida did. They hung 70 on the Citadel. This is Emmanuel Moody, the transfer from USC, the 10th touchdown of the day. Florida gets the style points for Urban. And oh, by the way, Mississippi State has scored 17 unanswered against Arkansas, and they have the lead. Back to you. All right, 70, huh? Remember Urban said he'd be surprised if they didn't put 60 on him? Yeah, he did. And uh, he's not surprised. Mr. Two Bits last game there, 86-year-old. Here's the punt. And I'm sure he said in the aftermath, I was just trying to get Emmanuel Moody some more playing. Right. Oh, he got out of that. Yes, he did. To the 27-yard line. Chad Jones with the tackle. Marche Green, a 14-yard return. Danny McRae said he signaled fair catch. They're going to bring this back, I think. Did Green signal fair catch? He's back here. Let's keep an eye on him. Yes. Well, his arm swung. Yeah. I can see where they would say. The previous play, the previous play is under further under review. review. He swung his arm up. And you can see if you were covering, you would see the arm right at the back. Watch his arm go up right like that. And then it went down. He maybe was kind of catching his balance. But to the players for LSU, they thought that the play had been killed dead. Now, yeah, the first replay, it looked to me like he that signaled fair catch. Like this right time, here, what, what? He, he, he's, he loses his balance, but to the LSU defenders, they saw his hand go up one time, and they thought it was fair now, catch. What's the difference, Gary? Now, this, here, to me, it looks like a fair catch, right there. I think so, too. And that's the view that the players from LSU have coming down the field. Now, safety for the punt returner, the LSU players, you would think the officials or the replay people would err on the side of safety and they're going to bring this back. Now, I don't think he was intending to call fair catch. It's right. a very interesting one right here. One low. Well, we're about to get the... Uh... I, I, I'll tell you, there was a few guys for LSU, and, I'm, and Quinn Johnson was one of them, who pulled up on the play. He thought it was a fair catch. After review, video shows that the receiver gave an invalid signal. I ruled the ball is dead when he caught the ball. They will have a delay of game for running with the ball after giving a signal. The ball was caught at the 16 yard line. He penalized five yards to the 11 first down. You know, Marshawn Green has no idea what he did. He's just saying, I lost my balance. Right. But I can guarantee you. Marshawn, you would not have gained what you thought. I think this is a great call by the officiating staff right here because the LSU players pulled up on the play. And the score here, Tim, 14-3. Marshawn Green with that really inadvertent 
fair catch signal, but you certainly could understand from that end zone view why the, the defenders or the oh yeah the punt coverage team thought it was a fair catch. Well, I kind of like what the LSU defense is doing right here. You got to, I don't care if he's a seasoned freshman quarterback. He's still a freshman quarterback. When is the LSU defense going to make a big play? They did it last year a number of times. Cordera Eason is the running back. Jevin Sneed fires it out right side. It is caught. And uh, Mike Wallace moves it out. Finally knocked out of bounds, short of the first down. Now let's take a look at Home Depot's tools for success. You know, you know in a toolbox how you can lift up the tray and there's hidden tools? Yep. Well, Houston that uses the hidden tools. A fake right there, that's way on the bottom of the box. Nobody was uh, expecting that ball to Kendrick Lewis. And then inside run by Brandon Bolden on the wild rep. He had tools that nobody even thought he was going to use on that drive. Jason Cook found Kendrick Lewis. That was Jason Cook's first career pass. So he's now one for one for 33 and set up the touchdown. Jason Cook is the fullback. Here's McCluster, gets the handoff. They fake the reverse toss, and he goes left. Great pursuit by the LSU defense. Patrick Peterson, number seven. Harry Coleman, number 24. Both there for the tackle. Do not forget, this is an Ole Miss team that on September 27th oh. defeated Florida 31-30 in Gainesville. Right, Florida helped them a little bit, but there was fourth quarter pass in that game and obviously that blocked extra point to finish it off. Second down, an Ole Miss team that has now won three in a row, first time in five years. Speed pumps once, tough catch. Oh, that's as good oh as throw it. boy, yes. The cluster down the left sideline. Vern, uh, what pass does this remind you of? The uh, Graham Harrell pass? Ooh. The defender is not looking, so you throw it right at the defender. See if we can see it in this replay. Yes, yeah, see the defender's not looking, Patrick Peterson right there? So you throw it right at the defender. Your guy has the advantage. That's exactly what Harrell did to Crabtree. And that, of course, was the difference in the Texas Tech win against Texas. One of the many memorable games this year. First down and 10. Tech, I've, I've heard, has a game against Oklahoma tonight. Right. We're going to be having pizza. Yes, we are. Tonight, baby. <laughs> pizza and Pino, nothing quite like it. <laughs> what a throw. Oh, what a throw. Yes, indeed. Well, you can see why I said that this is going to be a breakout year for Jevin Steed next year. You, you know, it's hard to cover much better than Peterson is on this play right here. I mean, this ball is laid into the outside to Marquise Summers, one of the receivers that is really coming on for LSU. I mean, it, that's just a handoff. 35 yard, 30 yard, three yards downfield. What a beautiful, and you know, you can see the difference. Ken Austin and Ole Miss and Houston Nutt are just playing their quarterback and calling plays while LSU is protecting their quarterback. Look at the difference. Sneed has hit his last seven, that one for 33. Marquis Summers, second catch of the year. Right side, Wallace. He's got it. Another one. Touchdown. How do you do that? Wow, Sneed. Beautiful throw. Three in a row. Three perfect throws in a row by Sneed. I, I haven't seen that very many times. The throw at the helmet. Remember when he wasn't looking? The fade down the left sideline and the fade down the right sideline. It's decent defense, and they just scored a touchdown on three perfect throws. Josh Sheen for the extra point. How about that for a quick length of the field drive? Well, I mean, that stops any... I mean, that, that goes against any defense. You can't do it any better. This is great coverage to the outside. Sneed puts it up to the outside. Perfect job by Mike Wallace to keep Chris Hawkins to the inside and another absolute strike downfield on that one. Jevin Sneed, the redshirt sophomore from Stephenville, Texas. He's 12 of 14. Jevin Sneed, Stephenville, Texas. Gee. Three perfect throws. I, I, you know, I, this is, you can see why Florida and Texas wanted this guy, and Ken Austin's done a great job with him. 
And LSU is going to have to come from behind again. Oh, well, they're down 18 now, 21 3. And Sneed. 211 yards in the first half. And, and this isn't, by the way, the Troy defense they're going to go against. Good point. I, 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 those three, three throws took my breath away. Justin Sparks will kick deep. Holiday and Keelan Williams are the deep men. Williams crossed them up. This one's going to Holiday. Yeah. They stayed together and then broke apart at the last minute. And here's Holiday. Out to the 28-yard line. Return the kickoff across the 25-yard line. So this LSU team that uh, they had close to a full house. Well, they, it was announced crowd of 92,000 last week. It was cold, and the team fell behind 31 to three, and 70,000 people flocked home. Everybody is stuck around today, but. Uh, there's going to be a, dis uh, a degree of uh, unhappiness. Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. This is the time of the game and the part of the field where Jared Lee got the ball against Alabama and he threw that pick six, okay? This is the time where they want out with 5.30 left of the half. They're going to hang it on their quarterback and say, get us 21-7, and then when the second half comes, we'll take it from there. 21-14, rather, or 10, and go from there. Here's Lee. With time. There it is. Deep, there it is. Intercepted. You could see it coming. Picked off at the 40. It was high and behind the tight end, Richard Dixon. And now a 19-year-old is going to hear a cascade of boos. You could see it coming. You knew they were going to turn the quarterback. It's almost the exact interception he threw against Alabama. Safety's going to go back right in this area. They get the crossing routes across. He overthrows them almost exactly the same way right to the safety in the back of the field, almost a mirror. The only thing different, Shard Johnson didn't take it for a touchdown. Kendrick Lewis, his fourth interception of the year, he leads the Ole Miss defensive backs. And now here is the, the hot hand of Jevin Sneed coming right, pulls up, looks back, yeah, smart has to play. throw it away. Smart play. Yep. And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. You guys, you'd think that a struggling quarterback would be seeking some help down here on the sideline, trying to get someone to talk to him. No, with offensive coordinator Gary Croton up in the booth, after he gets off the field, he talks to him on the phone, and then that's it. He just stands on the sideline and watches the defense all by himself. He doesn't talk to his line. He doesn't talk to his receivers. And he doesn't talk to his backup, Jordan Jefferson. Every so often, Miles will come over, give him a pat on the helmet, try to keep his confidence up, but that's it. All right, Trace, thank you. Second down, here's Sneed into the flat, caught, 45-yard line, nice open field tackle by Perry Riley, number 56, McCluster makes the catch. You know, I, I got to say, Vern, I think Tracy's right on on this. She asked in the meeting to Gary Croton, do you ever consider going down to the sideline and doing it from there? And I actually hadn't even thought about it until she asked the question, you got a young quarterback, might it pay to go down there? Now, Gary said, I don't feel comfortable doing it, but then I did, as we further questioned him, and he says, I did call the plays from the sideline when I was the head coach at BYU, so it's not like he couldn't do it. Third down nine. Ole Miss up 21-3. Here comes the blitz. Sneed steps up, fires it, caught. Oh, oh big hit. Oh, yes. Looked like it was going to be complete. And Harry Coleman and Phelan Jones are there at the point of the near catch. Incomplete. Well, this is what safeties are supposed to do. Clean it up. Harry Coleman comes in. The ball's well thrown. McCluster gets it a helmet full, kind of like Ronnie Lott would do back in his day when you tried to throw those crossing routes. And that will bring on Rob Park to punch Chad Jones at the 10-yard line. 4.29 to go first half. Fourth and nine. Nice high punt, fair catch. Jones comes up and grabs it at the 16-yard line. 21 3 here. Let's go back to New York and Tim Brandt. All right, Vern, Penn State continues to roll against Michigan State as Daryl Clark hits Derek Williams a 32 yard strike. So they look to be Rose Bowl bound in Wisconsin, once ranked as high as number eight in the country, down 20 to 14 at the half to Cal Poly. Now, that's one of the top ranked teams in the old Division I AA. We're talking about Cal Poly. That's a pretty good team, Vern. Indeed, but uh, it is Division One 
double A, right? Yeah, what do you, what do, you do here if you're Croton? Uh, well, can't, I mean, 21 3, it's hard to run out the half. Here's Scott, right side. Jimmy oh, Scott. You know, what are the numbers for Lee now? He's 3 of 10 for 30 yards. Got, got really nobody else to go to. No. Both, get, both uh, Gary Croton and Les Miles, excuse yes. me, Gary, made the point a couple times Scott, that Jordan Jefferson yards. just wasn't ready to play a complete game. Well, look, just at least that interception, the defense was allowed to save it. You know, I mean, those ones that go the other way, just that's just devastating to a team. Second down, five. Lee, deep, got it! Oh, no! Oh, my. Oh, his most, one of his most reliable receivers, the tight end, Richard Dixon, and that would have been a huge game. See, this is what you love about Jared Lee, what could be. You throw an interception down the middle, and look at this throw. Down the middle with a linebacker right in the middle of that thing. He threw it right off Tony Fain, number 47. It, it's not like this guy... It is a dog. He can play. He's just making mistakes. He's got a bright future if he survives this freshman year. Third down. Ole Miss. Lee off his back front. He's got the fell open. Oh, dangerous pass. Well, and he's but, down. And, he's and Lee's down. Yep. To Brandon LaBelle. Jared Lee hung in on that one as long as he could because he knew he had LaFell one on one. Now, if he gets this picked off, everybody in the crowd is going to boo him because watch him throw this one off his back foot. He buys time, buys time. Now, watch a buys time and gets hit and plant. And I think he caught his right leg under, whether it was his knee or his ankle. Watch him buckle that right leg under the hit and a perfectly thrown ball to Brandon LaFell. Kind of got his right leg caught behind him. Watch as he comes down. Yes. Oh, God. It's his right ankle or right knee. That one looks bad. That one looks very bad. It was Parade Jerry who hit him. Totally clean yeah. hit, but he got his right ankle or knee or leg. I mean, that, that just could be... And now, now Andrew Hatch is not ready. He broke a bone in his fibula a couple weeks ago, or three weeks ago, or whatever it is. So Jared Lee will be assisted over to the sideline. Jordan Jefferson, the freshman. And there's only one other quarterback on this team besides Jordan Jefferson, T.C. McCartney. Grandson of the old Colorado coach, uh, Bill McCartney, a walk-on. They'll have to go to the Wild Tiger. Yeah. That's right. See, you're, you can't even hide. There's, there's, is he with TC right there? It's hard to even hide Jordan Jefferson now because the score is 21-3. You can't give up any possession in this game now. And on the first down, as Lee gets to the bench, it's Jordan Jefferson who's on with Quinn Johnson. Takes the run, backs up, goes deep left side. He's got LaFell. Brandon LaFell, first down at the 22. See, they just don't have time to hide him. It was the Tebow play-action pass from Shotgun. LaFell very interestingly runs kind of a stop and go. Watch LaFell come out. He'll spin around and then go down the field. Spins around, goes down the field, and beautiful throw. But I told you this guy's got a big-time arm. They go without the huddle. Jefferson's second pass completion this year. And that one is through the hands of Demetrius yeah. Bird. It understandably, was yeah. understandably, he's goosed. He's right now, he's, <laughs> he is really ready to throw. Well, Jared Lee on the sideline. Let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. Guys, I was told it is a right ankle sprain. They're checking it out right now. He's definitely in a lot of pain. They will check it out further at halftime. He did find some time, though, to cheer for Jefferson after that last completion, guys. Thanks, Tracy. Second down and 10. 21 3 in this one with 3 3 to go in the first half. Blitz Jefferson to the 20 yard line. Now, every time, now, now this is kind of ironic right here. You're down basically to your last quarterback. But what Jefferson does well is run the ball. Now, for that, every time you run the ball with the quarterback, you have to really be holding your breath. 
Now, if it's 10-3 or 14-3, you might be able to hide up 21-3. You know, I, LSU has to get a field goal here, and that would make it a two-possession game. Right ankle, Jared Lee getting medical assistance, and it's third down and seven. Sprint out. Jefferson pulls up, fires it. Incomplete. Flag down. Intended for Tolliver. Marche Green was on the coverage that time to the outside. That's that sprint out that Jarrett Lee used so well against Alabama, the kind of the comeback to the outside. Let's see what happened. Right down the sideline there. There's Tolliver. Oh, that ball was underthrown. There. I don't know about that call, to tell you the truth. That looked a little weak to me. I thought that was pretty good coverage and an uncatchable ball. It does go as a uh, pass interference call against Marche Green. First down. And a first down and goal just inside the 10. Now might be the time to, you know, discretion better part of Valor here. Got a running quarterback, should be able to run the option and plenty of time to do it. 2.18 to go first half. Five Ole Miss penalties now. And from the spread, it's the freshman Jefferson. Backs up. Goes into the corner. Caught. Touchdown. Terrence Tolliver using that height advantage at 6-5. What a throw. Six five Tolliver over the five eleven Dustin Muzon. And look at Les go right to his quarterback. Settle down. Go to your coach. Think about the next series. Cole David had hit 105 extra points in a row until he missed last week. And uh, nails this one. Well, Jefferson to Tolliver. My fault there, Vern. Sorry. Um, we talked about Jevin Sneed throwing three strikes. Well, here's the second strike. You don't do it any better than that. And Tolliver, I was down on the field. This guy may be bigger than Randy Moss unless says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We recruited this guy for a reason. Had a tremendous record in high school when he didn't even lose a game. And he steps on this field ready to play. Return the kickoff. Mike Wallace, number two, is the deep back. 21-10. Ole Miss leads by 11. Josh Jasper will kick it off. Wallace at the five. Out near the 35 yard line. Stephon Francois makes the tackle, and let's go back and take a look at the well, touchdown. Dustin Muzon has got pretty good coverage here, but this ball is thrown exactly where it had to be thrown, and Tolliver goes up against it. Now, Jared Lee, now, now let's not forget, on that injury, he was the guy that hit the third down pass that started this drive. And Les Miles said, now, keep, keep it together. That's all right. You had fun. You celebrated, but you're my quarterback. I need you the rest of the game. And during the timeout, Jarrett Lee went into the locker room. He had assistance for the first 50 yards of the walk, but when he got to the end zone, he said, I'm going to take this in by myself. LSU's got three timeouts. Jai Eugene makes the tackle here, number four. And they're going to take it. They use the first of that trio. 21-10, time called, 155 to go. We're uh, 155 away, and during a... The previous time out, this was Jarrett Lee. He got the assistance until he got toward the end zone. Then he said, I'd like to walk this in by myself and did. Second down and 10. Sneed has it under pressure. Nailed. Call timeout. It's Raheem Alam, who now has seven sacks for the season. He's not a starter, but he's a pretty good pass rusher. Well, great coverage in the secondary by Danny McCray. The safety took the back coming out. Sneed had nobody to throw it to, and that produced the sack. Perfect strategy by Les. Time call. Raheem Alem with the sack.
Jevin Sneed and Ole Miss with a third and long, 21-10, 146 to go. And LSU has one timeout left. Tough play call for Ole Miss. I think they're going to run the ball and force a timeout. High formation. Yes, it's McCluster who comes right. And Tyson Jackson, another of those 19 seniors who makes the stop. And, and, and this is going to be really big because I was down on the field before the, before the game, Vern, and Colt McCoy was making field goals from the 53-yard line, meaning you could kick a 63-yarder. You only got to get the ball to the 45 to get this ball 21-13 score. Trendon Holiday drifts back. He's going to let this one bounce, and it takes a huge... Oh, that he picks it Smart up. Play. My God. Smart play. Watch out for the block in the back. It's not there. Here goes Holiday. The play was blown dead. Wow. Whistle. Oh, my. The official, I saw him signal, timeout. The dreaded inadvertent whistle. They thought Holiday had been stopped. He called fair catch, right? So the inadvertent fair catch. They're calling it an inadvertent fair catch. He waved his hands down to get away from the ball. That's he's telling his players to get away from the ball, and then he catches it. That's not a fair catch signal. That was just missed. That was not a fair catch signal. First down and 10. Jefferson. Richard Murphy. Out of bounds. We're getting some okay. help up in the booth from our official in the booth saying when the returner, Trinan Holiday, waves his hands like that to get away from the ball, that that is the proper call that he cannot take the ball and run with it after that. That is the rule, I guess. I'm not, he was trying to tell his own players to Stay get away. away from the ball. The ball bounced to him, and he can't advance it. So Rocky Good has been with us all year, helped us on that one. I had never heard of that, I have to be honest. Nope. I knew he didn't signal fair catch. Jefferson. Tolliver. At the 30-yard line. 109 to go. Now, LSU, as much as they'd love a field goal, have to avoid a disaster. They get the ball to start the half. Let's not try to ask him to do too much here. Third and four, under a minute remaining. Drills it, Bird, first down. Clock stops while they reset the chain. Now remember, they only have to get the ball to about the 40-yard line. That's a gain of 17 and a first down, 46 seconds I referred to, to Colt David as Colt McCoy, but it is Colt David, obviously. LaFell, that stops the clock. Jefferson's pass. Remember, Second down. it was 31-3 last week, and they came back. 21-10 does not look insurmountable. There's Colt David. He was hitting them from 62 and 3 yards in warm-ups. I watched him. He was right in the middle of that Tiger emblem, kicking him in and making field goals. So they need... 43-44 uh, yard line. About 13 yards. 40 seconds to go. Stunts by the defensive line. Jefferson will take out. Yeah, this is going to come Connelly. back. Holding. Yeah, yeah. Jefferson is out of bounds to stop the clock, but there's going to be a holding call. Looks like it might be Richard Murphy, the back. 
I actually could see this one pretty cleanly, and it was uh, pretty obvious that Murphy grabbed on. Number 26, offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Tough matchup for Murphy. He had a defensive end on that play, and he couldn't handle him. He tried to go low and couldn't make the play. Second down. 33 seconds to go, second down and 20. Charles Scott on the field now. Uh, I, I, all I'll say is they got more guts than I do. I'd be very, very careful here. You're in the game. Don't toss it away. Again, stunts and a blitz. Five men coming. There's the catch. Made across the middle. First down at the 46. Jared Mitchell, number 87. They're almost... Stuffed it in there, and Mitchell beats a couple of blockers. It would be a 63-yarder if they don't gain a yard. Here's Jefferson back. Under pressure. Caught and dropped. He fumbled it. Jefferson. And it's Kendrick Lewis, number one, the safety. Yeah, all in all, a successful finish of the first half for LSU. That's a half, the score. 21 10. Jevin Sneed hit those three quick passes, each beautiful, to give Ole Miss a 21-3 lead. LSU has come back. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Coach, first, any update on Jarrett Lee? Uh, it doesn't look like he'll return. Well, you put Jefferson there in there. He finishes the drive with a touchdown. A long conversation with him afterwards. What did you say there? What did you say right before the half? Well, I just told him we're just getting started. You know, that's that's a great first drive. Certainly his most significant action of his career. But that's just the start. Down 21-10, but had no problem coming back last week. One thing about this team, they, there's no quit in them. They understand the position. They play from behind well. Thanks a lot, Coach. See ya. All right, thank you, Tracy. Jefferson comes on, throws a touchdown to Tolliver. It was Jarrett Lee, the starting quarterback, the red shirt freshman, ankle injury in the locker room, not going to return. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vert. We're for all the best in highlights, insights, and more Wednesday only on Showtime. Now for the SEC moment presented by Sonic. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Vern, the most famous play in LSU history, Billy Cannon's midnight run versus Ole Miss in 1959 with the call LSU's J.C. Polites. 15, stumbles momentarily, he's at the 20, running hard at the 25, gets away from one man for 30, still runs at 25, at the 35, 25, he's got Earlier today, Cannon was presented with his National Football Foundation Hall of Fame plaque. He will officially be inducted into the hall as part of the class of 2008 next month in New York City. All right, Tracy and uh, his teammates from the 1958 LSU National Championship team, coached by Paul Dietzel, are being honored at halftime. We'll return right after these messages. Halftime, we're getting set for the start of the third quarter, 21-10 Ole Miss. And a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson with LSU head coach Les Miles. Coach, now that you've had the half, what did you tell Jordan Jefferson as he gets ready to see his most significant playing time? Play like he's been playing, play like he knows how to play. Um, you know, understand that, you know, he's he's got the offense, and, you know, here we go. Jefferson, though, known as a running quarterback, but you're down to your last quarterback. So how do you adjust the game plan to his strengths but also keep him healthy? Well, we want to run him every now, and that's a fact. Uh, but the difficulty that Ole Miss has now is there's a mobile quarterback in for the Tigers and that can throw. So they're going to have a uh, – we'll have to see how they play us. If they give us – I mean, he jumps out of there on that one scramble for 10 yards. We're expecting to do that again. Thanks, Coach. See ya. 
Jared Lee back on the sideline, hobbled as you can tell, right ankle sprain. Doubtful he'll be back. Well, I wonder if he had to go, could he could he do kind of line him up in shotgun and carry him to play to play? You know what I mean? It's basically, I guess he could stand there and throw. Underway in the third, 21-10, Ole Miss leads it. They will kick off. LSU has two deep. And here is Holiday at the three. Just does avoid the tackle and is knocked out of bounds. Well, I'd ask you, how does all of this with the quarterbacks affect LSU? Well, you remember what they told us, that Jefferson is not ready. Right. Can't, he can't play. Well, battlefield promotion. You're in, son. And, and by the way, we're behind, and we got to run a whole offense. It, there's no way to avoid it. This is why you practice. This is what you get ready for. And whatever happens happens has Ole Miss prepared for him at all I don't think the offense is that different except for what Les said I want a passing play the potential for him to scramble could be the wild card he keeps it comes right there you are oh dear wow he took a nasty spill just slipped as he got into the bench area well, it was a very good question that Tracy asked because we were thinking about the same thing. What do you do? You're basically down to your last quarterback, and do you run him? Do you just run your regular offense, or do you feature what he does best? And it seemed like Les Miles said, we got to do a little with what he does best. Gain of 20, first down and 10 at the 47. Looks like Ole Miss is loading the box here. Last week, they trailed 24-3 at the half, ultimately 31-3. Here's Jefferson again. And he's out of bounds at the 45. How about halftime trends? Well, you know, we all watched the game. Sneed was unbelievable. Two of those four incompletions were throwaways. Jared Lee had a tough start. He was actually fortunate not to have another interception, but Jordan Jefferson came in and saved this game. Wallace is the receiver that's kind of making the plays and the stop guy. Neither team could rush the ball, but for LSU to have minus two yards rushing, it's almost shocking. And Jordan Jefferson has actually the two biggest running plays of the game so far to start out this half. Charles Scott, 1,000 yards plus for the year. One rush for two yards. Here's Tolliver, left side, close to a first down. At the 43-yard line, Jamarcus Stanford, number 13. First down. And that is an LSU first down. Impressive start for the LSU Tigers. They were down 21-3. Jared Lee injured, right ankle. Jefferson came on, led them on a touchdown drive, and he found Tolliver for the only LSU touchdown of the game. Here's LaFell wide to the left side, and Demetrius Bird wide right. Scott, no. Well, big time play there. By a big time nose tackle, Parade Jerry. What a football play. He just stones Brett Helms. Watch, right in the middle of the frame right there. Excuse me. Right in the middle, right there. Stones Helms, then sheds him and makes the tackle on Charles Scott. What a wonderful play. Talk to Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator, who's played best on your team. Didn't hesitate. Parade Jerry. Brother John is an offensive lineman, a starter for Ole Miss. Here's Jefferson. Got it. Could be another first down. Let's see what the spot is. Demetrius Bird, number two. This was a rocket. I thought Allen Wallace was going to get this ball. The linebacker ran underneath it. The ball is thrown so fast. Look at this. Just right over the out straight. It was tipped. That ball was tipped. And I thought Walker was going to get that ball, and what a catch by Bird. That's like, you know, catching a foul tip as a catcher. Holy cow. Demetrius Bird out of the Miami area, another of those seniors playing his final home game today. And a great mid-air adjustment. Here's Jefferson back. Pumps goes deep. Watch out. 
incomplete. It was intended for Bird. Who's on defending? Well, the senior class, 19. Look at the record, 50 and 12, 28 and 10 against SEC teams. And of course, they won the national championship last year. Uh, and that wild last week before the BCS standings were announced, they went from seven to two and then won the title. Second down and 10. Saron Black, number 70, takes his stance. Option left. Scott gets a block, not much. In the way of help, it was Quinn Johnson who was out there with the block, but Ashley Palmer, number 11, senior from Compton, California, for Houston Nuts, Ole Miss team. And Parade Jerry again. Um, you know, there, there's kind of a possibility that this Parade Jerry could be playing himself into the first round of the NFL draft. He is dominant as a nose tackle. I mean, we talked about Cody and what he did, but watching this guy play, you just don't play nose tackle any better than this. Third down and 12. Opening drive of the third quarter. Jordan Jefferson, the freshman quarterback, on in relief of the injured Jarrett Lee. Blitz coming. Batted down. It'll be fourth down. And I think it was Hardy, wasn't it? Yes. See, there's another guy that could possibly be winning the draft. There could be really three highly coveted NFL prospects on this team. Parade Jerry, Greg Hardy right there goes up and gets that down, and then Michael Orr, the offensive tackle. Three NFL profit. You know, Hardy, as I said before, kind of reminded me of my old teammate in Detroit that came out, Al Bubba Baker, very skin and thinny, thin, and uh, now a 50, what, three yarder, 52 yarder. 52 officially for Colt David. If good, it would equal his longest of the season. He told me on the field the last thing he thinks of, swing easy. Well, he gets a bad snap, and this one is on the way. Got it! Brady Dalfrey appeared to bobble the hold. I don't know if the snap was bad. Yes, it was. Swing easy. Let it go far. Don't we wish we could all do that when we're playing golf? 52 yards, and he cleared it as straight as can be. At SEC on CBS, we are with you this afternoon from Death Valley Tiger Stadium. And LSU has scored the last 10 to carve 10 points off the deficit. And now Josh Jasper will kick off for the Tigers. Last week, they were down 31 to 3 to Troy. Came back and won. Can they do it again? Wallace moves up and takes it at the 12. Right side. Popped. Pretty good. Wallace. At the 28, Ace Foyle makes the tackle. Jevin Sneed, redshirt sophomore, had that great drive in the second quarter. Three great plays. Remember, the drive at the end of the half, he was just trying to get the half over. But there's strike number one, perfect throw. Then down the left sideline, a perfect fade to the outside. And then to cap it off, the touchdown fade to the outside. Vern, you know what I was thinking? That's like hitting blackjack three straight hands. <laughs> Left side, got a man. Jay Hodge, number three, out here on the left side in front of Harry Coleman. What a bright future he has. Now, we saw him early. He still looked like a work in progress. Now you can see, get him a few starts, how this guy has come on, and he will, I conceivably now for the next two years, be a SEC quarterback at every team in the league as the Wild Reb gets uh, kind of dialed up again. So McCluster will take the direct snap and then follow the block right side. And he squirts around the right end. Picks up around McCluster. nine. Out the uh, near the 48-yard line. Oh, yeah. And it's time now for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. This is a good one. How did crimson and navy blue become the colors of Ole Miss? Crimson and navy Pick blue. Look, looks like red to me. Well, but... Yeah. Well, I love their helmets. This is nice a helmet, as you can see. It's with that deep, dark blue black. Right side, Cordera Eason. Eason. That's his fifth right carry of the ball game, and he is uh, 
going to get into double digits on that carry. Beckwith. On second and one, Gary Beckwith makes the tackle. Yeah, Houston Nut. I don't think he was very happy with the spot. So time has been called, and they'll bring the chain over from the near side. You know how different the. You know, you watch Alabama, and Alabama goes right at Andre Smith. Where here at Ole Miss, they don't go at Michael Orr at all, do they? No. How Interesting. Different. Yeah. Orr is more of a finesse player, a pass blocker. Andre kind of is a road grader type. That's why Houston Nutt wasn't happy with the spot. It'll be third down. Yeah, now you wonder if Houston Nutt, just feeling it here, is he going to do third a little down. Bart Starr third and inches and then, you know, give the ball back and try to make it on fourth down? And you just put a little play action pass. Bart Starr, third and inches, ice bowl. Oh, yeah, third and inches. 21 17, Vince Lombardi's team defeats the Dallas Cowboys. One of us in this booth was there. Oh, wow, look at this. Now, the way they spread out, you would assume not. Sneed under center. Quarterback sneak appears to have it. Stay. What do you think about Houston Nutt's 10 years at Arkansas? The last time Houston Nutt led a team into this stadium, they took LSU into triple overtime and defeated them 50 to 48. And it was a week later that he announced his intention to resign at Arkansas under intense pressure and accept the job at Ole Miss. So he has fulfilled one year. That's right. And, it, and it's the that's the night that uh, LSU thought they blew the national championship. First down and 10. Flag, bring it back. Full snap, false start, number 71, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. That's Reed Neely, the left guard. Well, Nutt, first coaching job at Murray State. Look at the, the year prior to his oh, appointment. And then in his first year, four and seven. He was out at Boise State. They were two and ten. Got them to five and six. Arkansas, first same and kind of deal, and he's done it in Oxford. Well, let's give a little uh, credit to Ed Orgeron, who's built with three good recruiting classes, built some talent, and left some talent here, including the quarterback. First down and 15. Play fake. Sneed in pressure. Shakes it. Pulls up. Fires it. Inter oh! Oh! oh. It, and right now, Jarrett Lee is saying, Chris Hawkins, they never drop any of mine. I thought he was sacked twice on this play. Yes. Once, twice, and then he's going to run, and he says, oh, I can make a play slightly behind, and Hawkins drops the ball. Now, remember also, when Nick Saban left LSU, he recommended Houston Nutt to be the head coach of LSU. Second and 15, Sneed flings it. He's got a man wide open. Lionel Bro to the 15 yard line. Tell you, when you've got a quarterback that can throw strikes, it's just, it's really unbelievable. The bottom of the screen right here, coming down right in there, getting into the soft area and then throttling down. Watch how he throttles down, gets past, and then throttles down into the dead area. That is great coaching. You know you've got a coordinator that knows what he's doing when you get those receivers to throttle down against the zone. Out of the wild rebel, here's McCluster who goes right then cuts back. And on the heels of a 39-yard gain, he picks up a quick five. Kelvin Shepard, uh, that last play worth another look. On balance, don't to put too much air under it. Get it there before the safety Danny McRae comes across. And boy, what a nice play for Bro, and kind of makes a couple guys miss. Jevin Sneed. Here, Wildcat again. Wild Reb again. Sneeds out as a receiver. He's caught two this year. Reverse. It comes left. Touchdown Ole Miss. Marquis Summers. In the round by. You got to give it to Houston Nutt. The guy is one of the best game coaches I've seen. You know, I knew his reputation before I came to this conference. But to watch him. You know, there's some coaches that can prepare a game plan, and some guys can feel a game plan. He can feel it. 
13 yards, Marquis Summer out of the Wild Rebel. And Joshua Sheen is on for the extra point. He's hit three in this ball game. This one is good. He has made 62 in a row. Houston nut. And his team overcame a first and 15. How about the touchdown play? Well, the LSU coaches said, you know, they, Arkansas was so successful with their Wildcat against us before. We feel like we got a better plan. But you know what? The Wild Reb has done a better job. And boy, when you get the big Devron Geralds there center out on the play, you've got a positive play. Twenty-eight thirteen. Don't forget later in the game this afternoon, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Ole Miss with a brilliant drive, and they've uh, assumed a 15-point lead now. Twenty-eight thirteen. Justin Sparks will kick off, and Trenton Holiday, Keelan Williams are the two deep men. You see them. Holiday's the short guy, and they're going to wait as long as they can. Yep. Before they split. Don't blame them. No, no, no. And now, as Sparks approaches the ball, Holiday goes to the left side, and he will be the recipient of the kickoff. Wow. How about that for aggressive pursuit? Derek Herman, number 39. And Houston Nutt, think he's not into the game watching oh, yeah. after the touchdown. Not only did he call it up and dial it up, but he kept his team enthused. Look at that. I'm with you guys. Let's give also a, a good call to Ken Austin, the offensive coordinator on the play, both of them. You know, I, I think Ken Austin is going to be a head coach. He was a head coach of Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I think he's going to be a head coach very soon. Starting quarterback, there's Ken Austin. First down and 10. Jefferson pitches right side. Keelan Williams, number five, to the 28. Well, let's uh, get the duck back on screen. And the Aflac trivia question, how did crimson and navy blue become the colors of Ole Miss? you got to go back a few years. In 1893, Coach A.L. Bondurant chose Harvard crimson and Yale blue to honor those Ivy League schools. Second down, two. Did you get that one? Well, no, I didn't. Know. <laughs> All these years, we've never had that in the no, 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 before. No, no, never. But oh, man. Uh, Tony Fine keys up. Keelan Williams. Keelan Williams. Well, rivalry Saturday, of course. And Harvard leading Yale 10 nothing. That is a final. You and I have both done that. I've game. done that game. Not yes. together. Nope. nope. Gosh, I did it. Uh, I'll tell you how long ago it was. Dan Jiggets wow. was an offensive tackle for Harvard. We did. We had a good start to that. Uh, we did one guy in a Harvard sweater, another guy in a Yale sweater for our open. A red and a blue one. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a guy in a raccoon coat. I thought that was pretty cool. Third down, six. Jefferson. Oh, oh man. Wow. They're starting to come after him, oh, aren't they? Oh, parade, Jerry. I'm telling this guy's a monster. It Ar looked like he was untouched. Ar Ar Arkansas could not block him. They were going to bring the safety blitz on this play. Parade, Jerry. Parade, Jerry. Does an arm over and went right by Lyle hit, and then he hits the quarterback. Whew. This guy is an NFL player. Arkansas will, I'll tell you, you, put on the Arkansas tape, he was unblockable in that game, and he's looking to put on the same type of game here. And that's a three and out. Brings on Brady Dalfrey, and the deep man is Marche Green, number eight. Fourth punt of the game for Dalfrey. Green at the 44. I get the feeling both returners are afraid to move their arms. <laughs> that's a reference to a new rule in college football. And we had a touchdown return negated back in the second quarter because of that call. Time here, 540 to go third. 540 to go in the third. Ole Miss losers six in a row to the Tigers of LSU, including the last three times they've been here. 2006, an overtime game. Ole Miss had a 20 to seven lead in that one. In 04, 27-24, go back to 02, 14, 
to 13. They lead by 15 here. Jevin Sneed has had a terrific game at quarterback. Hands it off the cluster who goes right. And he surges near a first down at the 43-yard line. The ball. Is he a valuable player or what? He's a high school quarterback. They said, you know, the one word that came up about him, fearless, was a wide receiver, runs the wild reb. Listed at 5'8", 165. All right. Pick up nine yards. Nine yard gain, second down and one. Down. He's out now. One at the 42 yard line. Cordera, Eason number 25. Boy, there hasn't been uh, much on the ground by either of these teams in this ball game. On right, second down, it'll be Eason. That was positive there, though. And let's go back to New York once again. Here is Tim Brendo. All right, Vern, Syracuse, two and eight. Look at this. Cameron Dantley finds Dante Davis, an 11-yard touchdown reception. Brandon Walker then tries a 53-yarder. No good. It was his third miss of the day. Greg Robinson, the outgoing Syracuse coach, clearly his biggest win in his career for the Orange. Back to you, Vern. Oh, geez, I'm, I'm, man. I'm stunned. I am really. Here's a play fake. Jevin Sneed, deep left side. There's an adjustment, and it's... Over the head of both defender and receiver intended for Shea Hodge with Patrick Peterson and, and down there. You had the right call, Vern. When, when Jevin Sneed threw that ball, he assumed that the receiver, Hodge, was going to go to the outside, and he cut inside real late. Now, the thing you got to re realize, if you're Ole Miss and LSU, so you might have to maybe attack the quarterback, a field goal is huge right now. You know, that takes it from 15 to 18 and makes it more than a two-possession game. No turnovers thus far for Ole Miss. And here's the Wild Rebel, the cluster. It'll be third down and nine. You know, we talked to the coaches, Doug, uh, uh, the LSU coaches, about this Wild Rebel, and the word they said was, it challenges every defensive rule you have. The way they stretch the corners, handle the linebackers, overload the run game. You know, that's why Belichick, even in the NFL, is having problems with it. It's hard to get a handle on this offense. Co-defensive coordinators, there's one of them, Bradley Dale Pivato. Doug Mallory, his co-defensive coordinator, upstairs. Sneed back on third down, deep left side. There's Mike Wallace, and he can't quite catch up to it. Defended by Patrick Peterson, it'll be fourth down. You know, even these incomplete passes are thrown in the right area. I mean, there, there's a skill to doing that, even. That was a big win for this LSU defense, though. Keep him out of field goal range, at least so far. Who knows yes. what that's going to happen here. <laughs> Rob Park is on to apparently punt. Chad Jones is uh, at the 10-yard line. LSU is in their defense safe again. Didn't work last time, though. No, no, no. There was a 33-yard pass from Jason Cook. This time it will be a punt. Park. And a fair catch taken fair at catch. the 12 by Chad Jones. 27-yard punt with 340 to go. The Rebels of Ole Miss being led by Parade Jerry. Ooh. Twenty-eight, thirteen, three forty to go. Parade Jerry has led an outstanding Ole Miss defensive effort. Jevin Sneed has had the hot hand offensively for this Ole Miss team. Bowl eligible, Gary, for the first time since 03. Houston Nutt told us on the phone Tuesday, I believe it was, that he asked the team when they were going for that bowl game, who in this locker room has ever played in the bowl game and not one Ole Miss player raised their hand. None of them had ever been in. You know, we get cynical about all these bowls, but for these guys, it's a big deal. First down and 10, LSU. Jordan Jefferson on for the injured Jarrett Lee. Scott comes right. His most effective run of the day. And let's go back to New York for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim. It is a rivalry. Washington 0-10, 1-10 Washington State. 
Here it is, Nico Grasso from 28 yards. We're going to overtime, Burn. Overtime, where the Huskies in overtime get Ryan Perkins with a 22-yarder. That ties the game at 13. And we're going to second overtime, Burn. More on the Apple Cup. Stay tuned. <laughs> you make a compelling case, Tim. Here's Jefferson back. Has to dance left, pull up, goes deep, and uh, heaves it out of bounds. Well, you got to give credit to defensive coordinator Tyrone Nix here shutting down this lineup for LSU. He has really put a game together. LSU with so many weapons has only put up 170 yards, 172 yards so far in this game. Now, admittedly, uh, you've got a backup quarterback in, but his defense did put him out. Third and two. 28-13, late stages, third quarter. And they will come right side. That's going to be short of the first down. Charles Scott. And Ole Miss is going to get it back. Charles Scott, who for the day now, that's his ninth carry for seven yards. I'll tell you, Les is looking up at the clock here and deciding if he should go for it. Fourth and one at his own 22. Picked up a yard. Fourth down. No. 21 yard line. Well, he ran that clock all the way down to 18 seconds before he made a decision. Don't raise the game. Dexter McCluster is back at the 40-yard line. See the play clock at four. And here's Dalfrey. Good one. Fair catch. For McCluster sure. backs. Yes, it was. That's the first really <laughs> exactly. observable fair catch signal we've seen today. 2.01 to go in the third. Monday on CSI Miami, three murders, one day, and you won't believe who the suspect is. All new CSI Miami, Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. Ole Miss, 28-13. As we segue into a night game here in Death Valley. McCluster is... In the quarterback position in the wild rebel offense. He keeps it. Goes right. <laughs> Michael Orr, who lines up on the right side. The All-American tackle in that uh, formation led the way around the right side. But Lazarius Levingston was there to make the stop. Well, Pevido and Mallory both said, we're going to be more multiple against the wild reb than we've been in the past. In the past, we've been all man coverage kind of attack the formation. We're going to play more zone and move our linebackers up against the Ryle, uh, back against the Wild Reb. As hot as uh, Jevin Sneed is, though, they're going to have to stop more than that. Sneed 15 of 22 for 262, yep. and that was before that pass and catch. Well, Jevin Sneed, how about his day for the, day, for the afternoon? Well, you don't get many like this when you're right on target. I bet he hasn't thrown three pat balls where he didn't want to throw all day. That doesn't mean you complete them all, but he's put the ball on the mark all day. He's having one of those dream days where he's just might be unstoppable. And, and you know, LSU fans are saying, you know, all right, maybe it's us. I mean, Stafford did this to us, too. I mean, the Troy quarterback did it to us. You know, when's this going to stop? And now, Sneed, top of your screen in a wide receiver position. This time they hand it off to Brandon Bolden. Nothing. Nothing. Lost two. Bolden. Chad Jones Bolden. comes up, number three, right to make side. the tackle. But that'll Final. get him to the fourth Chad quarter, Jones. and right now, Houston Nutt will play Eight, clock and look Lost for a field yards. goal. Second down, 12. Second and 12. Yep, he knows it. Us old quarterbacks, we got to get the games over early. <laughs> get a tall glass of iced tea. Yep. Yep. 20 seconds to go. I don't think he has to run. He'll ask the official if he has to run another play. So he knows already that he does not have to.
This is an Ole Miss team, as we mentioned back in September, went into Gainesville. Tracy Wolfson prowling the sideline. The Wolf is uh, working hard over there. 28-13. That's the end of three. We'll return to Tiger Stadium right after this word from your local station. Les Miles and the LSU Tigers trail in this one as we begin the fourth, 28-13. 15 minutes to go in Tiger Stadium where Les Miles and his team, 23-4 in his years here, but 11 wins after trailing during the fourth quarter. Last week, they overcame a deficit of 28 points with 30 in the fourth and defeated Troy. Here's Jevin Sneed on second down. Incomplete. It will be third down and 12. Now on the road, uh, does Ole Miss play this conservative or do they keep firing the ball? Deep? Well, I, I think a field goal is big, number one. Okay. I mean, if they can get a field goal, that'll make it more than a two-possession game. So, no, they don't want to be conservative because they got a quarterback that's hot. Jevin Sneed can play, but they also don't want to give a cheap one back to LSU because you really got a fourth-string quarterback in for LSU, and we can explain that a little later. On third down, they do keep this one conservative, and it'll be fourth as Dexter McCluster made the carry. Well, Andrew Hatch uh, learned yesterday, broke a bone in his fibula, the small bone, about four weeks ago. He might get back next week. Now, he was the starter to start the season. Right. And then Jarrett Lee became the starter. Now, remember, those two guys were only the starter because they lost Ryan Perilou. So you're down to your fourth quarterback. Here is the punt from Rob Park. And over the head, look at this field position. At the six yard line. 14-15 to go. We're playing in the fourth quarter in Baton Rouge. And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Ole Miss opened the scoring as Jevin Sneed found Mike Wallace, a 34-yard touchdown. They were up 7-0. And then Colt David authored a 46-yard field goal to cut it to 7-3. The next few series belonged all to Ole Miss. First of all, Bolden out of the Wild Rebel, touchdown 14-3. Then Sneed, a 25-yard touchdown pass. Mike Wallace again on the receiving end, 21-3. LSU, Jordan Jefferson replacing an injured Jarrett Lee, 9-yard toss. To Tolliver, 21-10. Cole David with a 52-yard field goal that cut the margin to 21-13. Markeith Summers out of the Wild Rebel again, a 13-yard run, 28-13. And that is as we stand with 14-15 to go in the ballgame. As fourth quarter is starting, and let me put something on here right now, okay? 30 points they scored last week in the fourth quarter. They open this drive from the seven. Jordan Jefferson under center. Goes right, has a man wide open. It's LaFell. So a good start to this team. Les Miles referred to last week's game against Troy. He channeled his inner Charles Dickens and said it was a tale of two halves. And he said it's one of the most memorable games in his career yeah. because of the comeback before probably 20,000 people at the end of the game. Well, you know, this Ole Miss secondary is susceptible. Cody Burns, Cody Burns from Auburn, put on 319 yards passing. Here's Jefferson back. Gets rid of it. Right side, Demetrius Bird. Well, last week, it's worth another look as they were down 31-3 at one point in this game. Yeah, and then uh, Jared Lee in front of a sparse crowd started going. A little help from Jordan Jefferson. But he got hot throwing his touchdown pass. They got a little lucky bounce on a punt. And all of a sudden, that power that LSU had took over that football game. And it happened fast, too. Still a lot of time in this game. 40-31 was the final in that one. 28-13 to score in this one. Jefferson, deep handoff. It's Scott. And he struggles to get yardage for the first down. He might have it here in the moment. The key in this type of thing, when you're behind like this, is to make each possession count. Don't be in a hurry 
to score, but be in a, but be cognizant that each possession we got to make yards, we got to move the chains and make it count, even if it's just a field goal. As you look at the rushing, 30 yards. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, and think about it. Alabama, only 107 yards, and now LSU, the other power team, 30 so far. It is a first down, first down and 10. Scott is the running back for the day. 10 carries, 10 yards. Jefferson out of the spread. He keeps it and goes right. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That gives us a moment to go back to New York. Once again, here's Tim Brandon. All right, Vern, in the Apple Cup, second overtime. Ryan Perkins oh, he misses his second field goal of the game. Second overtime, Nico Grasso, 37 yards. It's good. Keeps the Huskies' winless season intact. Paul Wolf goes wild, 16-13. to Washington State gets the W. Back to you, Vern. What, what a year in the Pacific Northwest. You've got Washington and Washington State both inept. The Seahawks are having a terrible year. The basketball team is playing in Oklahoma City, and it rains. <laughs> it's still beautiful, but it rains. Terrence Tolliver. Terrence Tolliver, the intended receiver, third down. Dixon is out of the game. Jared Mitchell, number 87. On the field, Demetrius Bird goes wide right, and three receivers are split off to the left on third down. Scott is the running back. Option. Jefferson, fourth down. Jefferson, the keeper, left side. Well, if you just tuned in, Jared Lee, the, the quarterback, the redshirt freshman from Brenham, Texas, had a tough start to this day. He was picked off, and then on this play, Parade Jerry nails him. Ankle injury, he limped off, will not return in this ball game. Uh, his dad, Steve, is a wide receiver coach for the Brenham Cubs football team. They won last night, by the way, second round of the Texas State playoffs. So did Stephenville. I just want to keep you up. I'm, I'm yeah. there. Are you? Four A playoffs. And here is Dalfrey's punt. Dexter McCluster lets it bounce. Well, I'll tell you this, with the clock the way oh, it is coming. now, yep. that'll be the last, oh, if the score is the same, that'll be the last fourth and six punt. We'll see out of less miles in this game. Jevin Sneed for the day, 16-24, 274. The Home Depot. The new AT&T. And by Geico. Eleven twenty-four to go in the fourth. Richard Dixon on the bench for the moment. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. Guess who? Richard Dixon majoring in business and agricultural business. He's a junior. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Louisiana State University's General Scholarship Fund. Here's the toss, left side. Gordera Eason, number 25, gets the carry out across the 31-yard line. Jai Eugene, number four, is there. Well, let's talk about SEC quarterbacks and include Jevin Snead in that list. You're right. I mean, there's really four guys that know they're going to play every game and finish every game. Snead, Wilson, Stafford, and Tebow. And you can see when these guys, these are the teams basically they're doing. Now, LSU is so talented, they've been able to do it in spite of their young quarterbacks. But these are the four guys, and you wonder, you know, Wilson's gone. Stafford, we're hearing rumors. Snead will be back. Tebow is the big question mark. Yeah. Houston Nutt looks on as his team faces a second and four. Eason goes left. Out near the 35. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch that is presented by Nissan. All right, Vern, Gary, Tim Tebow with his 43-yard touchdown pass to Riley Cooper gave him a total of a 100 touchdowns in his career. 58 through the air, 42 rushes. He did have another one to get to 101. And as for the triumvirate of talent on display tonight, Bradford and Oklahoma host Crabtree and Harrell of Texas Tech tonight. Back to you. Thank you, Tim. Gary, would you agree that the Heisman 
might be up for grabs in the game tonight. It's Harold's to lose. That's Excellent. what I think. Yeah, I agree. First down and 10. Left side, it's Eason again. Well, you got to include Michael Crabtree in anybody's conversation of the, the Heisman balloting, but here are the quarterbacks, of course, at the Magnets. Harold, his stats, McCoy from Texas. Bradford, McCoy's idol today, and Tebow. We'll, we'll see one of those three in the Big 12 are going to separate himself. It's going to be one of those three, and then it's going to be Tebow as the other one. How, how significant might be regional voting in this? I, I think one of them will emerge and get most of the votes from that region. I don't okay. think that'll be a problem. Second down and six. Sneed, play fake, comes right, looks deep. Nice pattern, and it's incomplete, just a little short. Intended for Shea Hodge. Pass intended for number three. You can see Ole Miss is kind of say, what do we do here? You know, I mean, ball's thrown. I thought the ball was, no, just a little throw short, and Shea Hodge kind of came out of his shoes or kind of tripped trying to get it. I think Houston Nutt is saying, all right, I like 15. But you know, like in golf, when the golfer's at minus seven and you go, boy, he could get to minus eight. He could win this thing. Yeah. I think Houston Nutt's saying, if I could get to 31, I got this game. He needs three. Might get it at 28. Third and six. Toss. Near side. That's McCluster. Fumble. Curtis Taylor has recovered it. Boy, what a great job by Raheem Alem. Staying home on this. Forces the play back inside. And now the bad memories, those ghosts, come back as Chad Jones makes a big hit to force the fumble. This is how Ole Miss lost their games. Turnovers in those, for those games, they were a minus seven total in their four losses. First down and 10. That is their first turnover in the last two games and three quarters. And here's Jefferson. Goes right. Yeah, it was a... Uh, nah. I think Parade, Parade Jerry might have been off sides or there was movement right before he moved. It was whistled dead. Before the snap, false start. Number 63, Number 63. offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Ryan Miller. Now, you, you, you can kind of understand when you got Jerry over you, and there it is, 63 has to block this guy. Now, watch him try to get there quick. Just before the snap, he leans because he's got to block Jerry, who's becoming dominant in this football game. Becoming, I mean, it ain't becoming. <laughs> he's been dominant. Let me reword that. <laughs> First down, 15, 9.06 to go. Jefferson backs up. And looks deep. Boy, he's got all day, but nobody open. Now he has to wing it, and he throws it away. He tried that same play-action pass, the Tebow play-action pass from shotgun. Well, Houston Nutt bemoaning the turnover problem that they've suffered in their four losses, particularly Vanderbilt when they had four turnovers and then fumbled going in for the go-ahead. Right. You can see in the four losses, 15 turnovers. And they turned it over today. Both these teams, by the way, are negative in their turnovers. I mean, that's the difference between being a nice bowler and being nationally ranked for Ole Miss. Now, on the other hand, Florida turned the ball over to help them in that win also. Second down, 15. Reverse. It comes left. Nice job Great defensively. Play. Wow. Kentrell Lockett, the defensive end who had the blocked extra point in the win at Florida with a big play there. The number one circled guy, and I'll circle him to help, that Houston Nutt said we can't let beat us was Trinden Holiday. And because from experience, he knows at Arkansas, he's done it to him before. Third and 18 with 8.29 to go. Got to get it into position to get a fourth down call here. Hardy's in the game. He's in defensively for Ole Miss. Here's Jefferson back. Blitz coming. Good blocking. And the pass. Should have been caught. Should have yep. been caught. Demetrius Bird. 
at 6-3, slipped right through his hands. He, he misjudged the speed on this ball. He got his hands up too late. Jarrett Lee does not throw with this type of velocity. Watch, he gets his hands up and it overpowers him. Coverage by number 12, Dustin And so fourth down at 18. And with 8-11 to go, Jefferson and the LSU Tigers will try to convert. Richard Murphy is on the field, number 26, a running back. Jefferson is 9 of 17. Let's go. Now it's going to be more. Yeah. I, I think you've got to punt the ball. I really do. There's still time left in this game. Full snap, full start, number 63, offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. I think it was it Ryan Miller. Yes, it is. Yep. Backup coming in for Lyle hit moves again. They're going to go for it. And Fourth and 23. I mean, Les is just saying I, I can't give away a possession. I mean, you know, it is a 15 point game. I don't blame him. I probably would still punt the ball. Here's Jefferson back blitz coming up the middle. He's hit and dropped. And the ball will go over on downs at the 40-yard line. And one of the reasons I want to say that is it's only a field goal away from you can't catch up. It was Greg Hardy, number 86. Greg been... Hardy in the game. Wow. You're right. Lord Greg, I didn't even see him in the game this time. And I've been watching for him. He took the inside rush and made the play. What the old Miss players say is when we put him in the game, things just start to happen. A chance. Auburn has something to say about that, and Florida State does as well. First down and 10, Ole Miss trying to break a six game losing streak to the LSU Tigers. And that one is up the middle. Catrera and Kelvin Shepard make the stop on Cordera Eason. What a what a game Ole Miss has put together today. I mean, their defense has not allowed LSU in the comfort zone. They have not been able to run the ball. What a run the ball for after, including sacks as we look at Greg Hardy, including sacks, what, 25 yards a whole game or something like yeah. that. I mean, it, it's just a game. When you think back to what Ole Miss could have been with games they could have easily won. This is a legitimate, and that's why this conference is so tough. The down-the-line teams in this conference are men. And off on the sweep right side. It's McCluster again, and he's out of bounds with the first down at the 25. i just uh, thinking about now that the course there in Oxford, Mississippi. They bus over here, right, instead of fly from Oxford, and they stopped for lunch yesterday in Jackson, Mississippi at Tico's Steakhouse. Really? Tico is Tico Hoffman, who was a golf scholarship here at LSU. And as they told him he could come to the game, but he couldn't wear purple and gold. <laughs> and well, they will fly back. How about that? That's a reward. Yep. No six-hour bus ride. First down and 10. Cook to fullback. Hand off right side. Decent. Now let's take a look at uh, at this Ole Miss schedule and the result. Look at this. They lost at Wake Forest with one second to go. Absolutely. They fumbled at the goal line to Vanderbilt. They lose at home to South Carolina. They fell down uh, behind at Alabama and then came back and wound up losing by only four. Time called. 6.42 to go. It's 28-13. Barnhart for the TIAA Craft College Football Today program. 6.42 to go in this one. Ole Miss trying to break a six-game losing streak to the LSU Tigers. They've got a second down. Jevin Sneed, handoff. Cordera Eason, first and goal. Ole Miss. For Ole Miss right now, they're not only blowing LSU off the line, they're kind of embarrassing them. They run right through a tackle by Kelvin Shepard that time as he overran the play. The only thing now that can happen bad and blow this game, in my mind, for LSU is a turnover right now. 
If they don't turn it over, they're going to kick a field goal. It's over. They just ball security. Jevin Sneed's got to get in there and say, guys, don't do anything crazy with the ball. Don't stretch it out. Protect the football. Hodge goes wide to the left, double tight end set, and two fullbacks. This is one of them, Jason Cook. Andy Hartman's also in there. Eason goes right, and he's stopped as he gets to the five-yard line. Eason. LSU on the verge of losing their third at home this year. Taylor and They've not lost three in Baton Rouge in a single season since 1999. Think about this. When we talked to Tyrone Nix on the phone from Ole Miss, he said, I got two goals. Stop LSU's running game. They all said that. And he said, try to keep their big plays to a minimum. LSU has had one play of 20 yards plus, and that was Jefferson to Mitchell. 21 yards is the longest play of the day, and they've had one of them. It couldn't have gone better for this Ole Miss defense and Tyrone Nix. Second down and goal. That's Cook again. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Eason. And it'll be third down. Eason. Well, SEC West, Houston Nutt. First year as the head coach. Alabama, of course, off this week. They've got Auburn at home. LSU currently at 3-3 uh, three and three in the conference. Ole Miss 3-3. Three and three. Auburn idle this week. Mississippi State and Arkansas. Ole Miss has one game left after this one. That's at home in the Egg Bowl, Egg Bowl. next Friday against Mississippi State. How about uh, LSU year to year here? Last year, what did we do them? Six, seven times? Yep. It was, the CBS stood for you can't beat us on Saturday. For C <laughs> and this year, CBS stands for can't buy success. They've been over on CBS with us. Yes. Fourth game, three of them here. And uh, I was reminded of that in the airport when I, I got off the plane on Thursday sure. night. And have heard about it five or six times since. Time out. Jevin Sneed for the day, 274 yards, 16 of 25, and a couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. He is our Direct TV player of the game, the redshirt sophomore, and he's got his team with a third and goal at the four. They'll hand it off, and it'll be fourth down. Well, Jevin Sneed is from Stephenville, Texas. It's about 100 miles southwest of the Dallas Fort Worth Airport. There are mom and dad, Jane and Jalen Sneed. His dad looks a little like Wilford Brimley. Yeah, I'd, I'd say they're from Texas. I'll tell you that. Don't uh, you think? I I'm from that hat? <laughs> Absolutely. He's all hat and a lot of cattle. Time called. daughter out of a thick one last Did he? week. Unbelievable. Uh, Unbelievable. Great. I missed it. I switched after cold yeah. case. I, I think it's going to go again. back to the wives this week, though. I'm not <laughs> I like when they go out on it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in line for the promo of the year <laughs> from George Schweitzer in New York. Yeah. You got to watch this thing. Dennis Haysburg, right? Yep. Yeah. Just wanted to show you I know my yeah, stuff. He's, he's the man. <laughs> Remember he was president in 24. 31 <laughs> 13. <laughs> 423 to go. This is yeah, a, this one. Yep. Anybody but Trendon Holiday. Yes, exactly. And look who gets it. <laughs> Will Blackwell, number 60, a backup offensive lineman. <clears throat> Parade Jerry has had oh. a wonderful game. Well, he had three huge plays. Play number one, putting out the quarterback. Play number two, you remember this stuff on the run? And play number three when he just finished it, that drive when... LSU was thinking that Jordan Jefferson was going to bring him back. He just said, uh-uh, not today. First down 10, LSU. They are at Arkansas, that game in Little Rock on CBS next Friday afternoon. Scott is the running back. Here's Jordan Jefferson. Contact and a flush. Called on uh, Cassius Vaughn, number 24. Intended for... Well, it's officially 2009 here at LSU. Mm -hmm. And number nine is going to be in the hunt to play next year. Defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of foul. And, and I don't mean to be 
cruel. I, honestly, I don't, because things happen in the world. But I think 2008 will always be known as the year as Ryan Perilou did not play here. Right. They were ready to make a run at this with Ryan Perilou. Things, you guys, you know, there's always a saying about quarterback, I'd rather play a year or two years later than one game earlier. And that's what's happened here. They've had to play quarterbacks that weren't ready. Jordan Jefferson is the true freshman who replaced Jared Lee, and he's going to get rid of this one. Is it? No, it's incomplete. Uh, I just think back, though, Gary, you know, we've done LSU a lot in the last two years, three years. And when the topic of Ryan Perilou and his yeah. stay here comes up with his teammates, almost to a man, they Every, say unanimous. it wasn't worth it. And it wasn't, and it, and it wasn't even close. It's, and when they all stood behind Coach Miles' decision to move forward, no matter what the outcome. This, this was a topic of conversation with our group. Right. Herman Johnson and Quinn Johnson yesterday afternoon. Demetrius Bird, we yes, talked to him about it. absolutely. Enough already. Now here's Jefferson going left. And he's got a first down after the 46-yard line. 3.59 to go in this one. Let's go back and spend a moment with Tim Brando. Somebody's got to win the ACC Atlantic. Fourth and five from the 39. Riley Skinner of Wake Forest is going to throw for it. It's going to fall incomplete. So Boston College in Maryland will meet their destiny at Chestnut Hill next week for the ACC Atlantic. Back to you, Vern. All right, Tim, thank you. This one complete out on the right side. That's Terrence Tolliver and uh, Dustin Muzon. Just talking during a commercial break a while ago. Here's Ryan Perilou, who was the hot prospect out of Louisiana. He agreed to go to Texas and then changed his mind and came here to LSU where he had a, a troubled time. On the other side of the ball is Jevin Sneed, who initially committed or to committed Florida. to Florida, changed his mind, went to Texas, lost his job to Colt McCoy, decided to transfer, came to Ole Miss, and sat out a year. Well, I wish they had the internet when I was a quarterback coming out. I'd be doing that too. <laughs> Is it intercepted? Uh -oh. Yes, it is. Fumble, Marche Green. And Green to the 13. Yep, it was intercepted all the way. It yep. Slight overthrow. And this time, the LSU defenders made the tackle. Little overthrow by Jefferson. Tip ball. Green gets it. And then just becomes a football player. Gets it out to the outside and almost puts it into the end zone. Marche Green comfortable with the football. Remember, he was a starting wide receiver a year ago. Second interception for Marche Green, and it's a first down at the 13-yard line. Go back to what Houston Nutt mentioned to us on the phone. I keep telling our kids, the more you win, the warmer it's going to get. And they might be uh, in a warm place on New Year's Day. Well, I've seen some cotton bowls, Vern, though. Oh, oh the ice Mr. bowl. Bill. How about Joe Montana? That's that right. Joe Montana. Boy, he, he, Houston better not be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> After, yeah. up a oh, I don't know if any of you remember, but that was a miraculous comeback. That, Notre Dame over Houston. That really started the legend of Joe Montana. Yeah, it goes back, uh, gosh, 79, I think. And it was really cold that day in Dallas. Second down. 31 13 in this one with 2.35 to go. Now, I can think of some coaches in this league who'd be throwing right now. Oh, uh, maybe. But the, it's funny, this whole stadium is almost left. Yeah. But the old Miss fans, and they're going right at them, is wall to wall, and they just had the chant going, We are Old Miss. Uh, <laughs> we are Old Miss. Last win in the series, 2001. Third down, seven. This is the kind of stuff you reach for when it's uh, less than two minutes to go. This is the first time that these two teams have been televised on CBS in this facility since 1963. I'm just going to guess, but I bet it was Lindsey Nelson. Jevin Sneed pulls it, runs. And he's down at the three-yard line. Chris Hawkins with the tackle. 
I don't think you need to get Jevin Sneed hurt. No. If you want to go to the Cotton Bowl, you're going to need him to beat Mississippi State. Believe me, Sylvester Kroon will have his team ready to play. They're really strong on defense, and this is an unnecessary hit for your quarterback. It is first and goal. So LSU survived a week ago. Thought they had it coming in for this football game on senior day. Didn't happen. Ole Miss, 413 yards of Amazing. offense. Amazing. Amazing. You see, the, LSU did not take kindly, it seems to me, to Jevin Sneed keeping Sneed. that ball the play before. It'll be second down. Well, coming up tonight on CBS, CSI, followed by Criminal Minds, and then 48 Hours Mystery. That's the lineup this evening. Houston Nutt said he loves bowl games in part because it gives his teams 20 extra practices. And remember this, you don't think quarterback means something in college football? The last time Ole Miss went to a bowl game, Eli Manning, I think he's still playing, was their quarterback. I think he is as well. Look There's at this, I told flag. you. Yeah, a little chippy. When you, when you do the little quarterback keeper, I would never do that, Vern. You know me. I do not like to rub anybody's nose in it. No. No. <laughs> no. Look at me. Am I believing you? I would never. I always Close. like to just go quietly. Offsides, contact by number 91, defense. Penalties, half the misses to the goal, still second down. Oh, yeah. You knew this was going to be, there's going to be some finish to this one. All right. Les Miles doing a little coaching on the sideline. Yeah. More asking what goes on out there, what's going on out there. We don't want to finish ugly here. 19 seconds to go. And let's see if he takes a knee. He will. I also know some coaches in this league who would not take a knee in that spot. <laughs> Anybody come to mind? What Five seconds to go. What a game for Ole Miss. Yeah, sure is. They go to seven and four. They win it 31-13. Jim and Sneed for the day, 16 of 25 for 274. And now it's time for the five-star plays of the game presented by Wrangler. Well, this was the game to me. Right here when Jevin Sneed got blackjacked, 21-21-21. He put three straight passes as perfectly as you could throw, and that really was the plays of the game. Or were. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I, was a, I was a math guy. <laughs> uh. There is the Magne Magna. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Ole Miss LSU is a longtime rivalry. It's recently been named the Magnolia Bowl, but for the fans of each team, this year's edition should be called If We Win, We're Going to the Cotton Bowl. Well, now they won, and it was just a huge game for Ole Miss in this one. Hottie Toddy was going wild, right reverend, pumping them up. And this is why Jevin Sneed hooks up with Mike Wallace. Deep touchdown pass. Jevin Sneed, let me tell you something, folks. He was on point today. Here, uh, we're going to have a punt. Or are we some Houston nut trickery coming at you? That's Kentrell. Uh, Kentrell Lockett, doesn't he play defense? He also catches fake punts. Nice play there by him. That's a little trickery right there. Is he waving in an airplane or calling a play? We'll never know. But it's America's favorite formation, Joey. The Wild Rebel. That's Brandon Bolden. He takes it in for the score. Ole Miss in a route early on. They go on top 14-3. to three. A little more Sneed. Here he hooks up with Mike Wallace again. Beautiful throw right over the shoulder. Rebels looking awfully good early on in this one. And Kendrick Lewis, we showed you he can execute a fake punt, but he also plays a little bit of defense in his spare time. Gets the interception right there. Tough day for Jarrett Lee, the LSU quarterback. He would get knocked out of this game a little bit later. And then some more trickery. We love it. This is Lionel Bro gets the reception. He just watches his play. A little spin move. Whoop, whoop. Gets him again. 
Spin cycle two times, Joey. I know you like it. One more time. America's favorite formation, the Wild Rebel, coming right at you. That's Dexter McCluster taking the handoff. Hands it off to Marquis Summers. Scoots in there for the score. Rebels win it 31-13. More SEC action. Florida hosting the city.